Dr. Zakir Naik. He will give us a talk on Does God Exist? Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahibi ajma'in amma ba'd. A'udhu billahi minish shaitani rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Sanurihim ayatina fi lafaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana law anna ulaq. Awalam yakfi brabika anna ulaq ulli shayin shaheed. Rabbi Shali Sadri. وَسِلِّ يَمْرِي وَحَلُّ الْأُقْدَةِ مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْكَوْ كَوْلِي My respected elders and my brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. It's a pleasure for me to be back in Qatar, alhamdulillah, after four years. And it's an honor for me to give a talk in this Katara village. And the topic of this evening's talk of mine is, Does God Exist? This talk of mine is mainly meant for three categories of people. Number one, those that do not believe in the existence of God. Those people who are atheists. The second category is those people who are agnostic. They do not comment whether God exists or does not exist. And the third category of people, those who believe in the existence of God, but they cannot convince somebody else that God exists. Whenever I meet an atheist who does not believe in the existence of God, the first thing I do is I congratulate him. Many people will wonder that why am I congratulating an atheist? The reason I congratulate an atheist is because most of the Christians, they are Christians because their father is a Christian. Most of the Hindus are Hindus because father is a Hindu. He is a Jew because father is a Jew. Many Muslims are Muslims because father is a Muslim. This atheist, he is thinking. He may be having relatives who believe in God, but he does not agree with the existence of God. He is thinking. That's the reason I congratulate him. I congratulate him because this atheist, he has said the first part of the Islamic creed, Islamic shahada, la ilaha, there is no God. To this atheist, half my job is done. To the other people, who believe in a God which is not the correct concept of God, first I have to prove to him the God he or she is worshipping is a false God. So half my time goes in proving the God that they worship is not a true God. With this atheist, half my job is done. He has already said the first part of the Islamic creed, the first part of the shahada, that is la ilaha, there is no God. The only thing I have to do is illallah, which I shall do inshallah. Whenever I meet an atheist, 
I asked him the first question that what is the definition of God? If someone says there is no God, he should know the definition of God, otherwise he cannot say that God does not exist. For example, if I say this is a pen, for anyone to say this is not a pen, he or she should know the definition of pen. That person may or may not know what I'm carrying in the hand, but for anyone to say this is not a pen, he or she should know the definition of pen. Otherwise, you cannot say this is not a pen. There may be some people who will argue with me and say that, Brother Zakir, since I know this is a book, I can very well say this is not a pen. If you know this is a book, that does not mean, and if you don't know the meaning of pen, you cannot say this is not a pen, it is very dangerous. Why? For example, if I say this is a kitab, now someone who knows English, he knows that this is a book. And if he doesn't know Hindi, Urdu, Arabic, he will say this is not a kitab. Because kitab in Arabic, kitab in Hindi, kitab in Urdu means a book. So if I say this is a kitab, for you to say this is not a kitab, you should know the meaning of kitab, otherwise you cannot say this is not a kitab. You may know this is a book. But kitab in Arabic or Hindi or Urdu means a book. Similarly, when someone says there is no God, he should know the definition of God. Otherwise, he cannot say there is no God. And when we ask these atheists, what is the definition of God? They tell us about what other human beings think what God is. And that atheist will tell me that, you know, God, when I hear about other people talking about God, that a God makes mistakes, a God requires rest, a God gets tired, a God requires to sleep, a God requires to eat, a God that can be defeated, a God that can die. So this atheist, he starts thinking that all these human beings who worship God, who has got human qualities like me, why should, I, why should I believe in such a God who can make a mistake, who requires rest, who can get tired, who requires to sleep, who can be defeated, who can die. So this atheist, he has the concept of God depending how other people portray the definition of God. For example, if a non-Muslim comes and tells me that, Brother Zakir, I do not believe in Islam, with, which is a religion, which is merciless, a religion which promotes terrorism, a religion which does not give rights to the woman, a religion which is against modern science, a religion which is illogical. So I will tell him, even I will not believe in a religion which is a merciless religion. Even I will not believe in a religion which is a religion of terrorism, which is a religion which does not give rights to the woman, which is a religion which is against modern science, a religion which is illogical. But I, being a student of knowledge, I will tell him that you have a misconception regarding Islam. Islam is not a religion which is a merciless religion. In fact, it is the most merciful religion. Every chapter of the glorious Quran, every surah of the glorious Quran begins with the beautiful formula, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Islam is not a religion which promotes terrorism. One verse of the Quran is sufficient to prove this concept wrong. It's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32. 
that if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder, or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves any other human being, it is as though he has saved the whole nation. Quran is the only religious book on the face of the earth which says that if anyone kills any other human being, an innocent human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if any person, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, saves any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, it is as though he has saved the whole of humanity. This verse is not present in any other text of any other religion. There's a misconception that Islam does not give rights to the woman. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 124. That if anyone who has faith and does righteous deed, whether man or woman, they shall enter paradise. There's a full talk I've given on the woman's rights in Islam. Islam is the most logical religion. Every teaching of Islam can be proved with reason, logic, and science. Islam is the most scientific religion. If you put the test of science to any religious scripture, the only religious scripture in the world which will pass this test of science, it is the glorious Quran. Now, when we explain to a non-Muslim and remove the misconception that he or she has because of the media, inshallah, that non-Muslim will start liking Islam. In the same fashion, we should even correct the wrong concept of God which is there in the mind of the atheists. The atheists when they hear people talking about God, having human qualities, like God can make a mistake, God can get tired, God requires rest, God requires to sleep, God requires to eat, God that can be defeated, God that can be killed. This atheist disagrees with such a God. We have to present to him the correct concept of God. And the best reply, that any Muslim can give you regarding the concept of God in Islam is quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Kul huwallahu ahad. Say, He is Allah one and only. Allah samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yulid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakullahu kuffa and ad. There's nothing like Him. This is a four line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, given in the glorious Quran. If any person says, so and so candidate is God, if that candidate fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. Number one is, Kul hu Allahu ad. Say, he is Allah one and only. Number two, Allah hu samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Number three, lam yulid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. There's nothing like him. This surah class is the touchstone of theology. Theo means God. Logic means study. Theology means the study of God. Surah class, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4 of the glorious Quran, it is the touchstone of theology. Touchstone, you may be aware, that if you want to buy and sell gold jewelry, you take that gold jewelry to a goldsmith, and that goldsmith takes the gold jewelry and rubs it against the touchstone. And depending upon the color he gets, he will tell you that this is a 24 karat gold, or it is a 22 karat gold, or it is an 18 karat gold, or he may say it is not gold at all because all that glitters is not gold. Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, is the touchstone of theology. You put this Surah Ikhlas to the test of the God you're worshipping. If the God you're worshipping passes this test, then he's a true God. If he does not, he's a false God. For example, 
there are many human beings in this world who believe that Bhagwan Rajnish is Almighty God. Bhagwan Rajnish, you may have heard of the person Bhagwan Rajnish. He's from India. There's a Hindu during question of the time who told me that Brother Zakir, we Hindus do not believe in Bhagwan Rajnish as God. I said, I never said Hindus believe that Bhagwan Rajnish is God. I've read the Hindu scriptures. Nowhere do the Hindu scriptures say that Bhagwan Rajnish is God. I said, some human beings believe he's God. Let us put this Bhagwan Rajnish to the test of Surah class. The first is, Kul Wallahu Ahad. Say, he's Allah and only. We know that Bhagwan Rajnish wasn't the only man who claimed divinity. There are hundreds of men who have claimed divinity and from the country I come, India alone, there are thousands of men who have claimed divinity. He's not the only one. But the Rajnish Bhakt will say, no, Bhagwan Rajnish is unique. Let's go to the second test. Allah Hussamad, Allah the absolute and eternal. Was Rajnish absolute and eternal? If we know from his autobiography, he was suffering from diabetes mellitus, he was suffering from hypertension, he was suffering from chronic backache, he was suffering from asthma. Imagine Almighty God suffering from diabetes mellitus, from asthma, from chronic backache. The third test. Lam yulid walam yulad. He begets not nor is begotten. We know Bhagavan Najnish had parents, mother and father. He was born in the state of Madhya Pradesh. And in the year 1981, he goes to USA and he takes thousands of Americans for a ride. And in the state of Oregon, he starts his own village called as Rajnishpuram. And later on, the American government, they arrest him and they put him behind bars. And Bhagwan Rajnish says, that the American government gave me slow poisoning. Imagine Almighty God being slow poisoned. And later on, he is kicked out from the country of USA and he comes back to India. And in the city of Pune, he goes back to his center and again restarts with a new name, Osho Commune. And when you go to his center in Pune, and if you go to a Samadhi, where his ashes are kept after he died, it is mentioned on the stone, on a samadhi, Bhagavan Rajnish, Osho, never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December, 1931, to the 19th of January, 1990. Never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. They forgot to mention uh, on a samadhi that he was not given visas to 21 different countries of the world. Imagine Almighty God coming in this world to visit the earth and he requires visas. And the Archbishop of Greece said, if you don't remove Rajnish out of this country, we will burn his house and the house of his disciple. And the last test, Walam Yakullahu Kufwan Ad, there's nothing like him, is so stringent that no one besides the true Almighty God can pass. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. Walam Yakullahu Kufwan Ad, there's nothing like him. We know Bhagavan Rajnish, like the other human beings, had one nose, two eyes, two hands, white beard. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. There's nothing like him. For example, if someone comes and tells me that Almighty God is thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. You might have heard the name Arnold Schwarzenegger, the person who got the title Mr. World, Mr. Universe, the strongest, the strongest man in the world, the strongest man in the universe. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, whether it be Anil Schwarzenegger, whether it is Dara Singh, whether it is King Kong, whether it's a thousand times or whether it's a million times, the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. There's nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given in the glorious Quran. If anyone says 
that so-and-so candidate is God, if this candidate fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. That's the reason the atheist around us, the definition of God that we see around us, does not satisfy the intellect that such an entity can be God. The moment you explain to an atheist the correct concept of God, there are high chances that he or she will accept in this Almighty God. I've given a talk on the concept of God in the major world religions. And I've proved that if you want to understand any religion, do not look at the followers. You have to understand what the scripture of that religion has to speak about itself. And if you have to understand any religion, you have to first understand the concept of God in that religion. Because according to the Oxford Dictionary, religion means a belief in a superhuman controlling power, a personal God or gods that deserve worship and obedience. I've given the talk and I've proved that if we analyze the scriptures of the major world religions, all the religions, whether it be Judaism, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be, whether it be Parsism, whether it be Sikhism, all these religions in the scriptures, they say that God is one who has got no image and idol worship is prohibited. It says that this almighty God has got no children. He has got no parents. So if we analyze and do a comparative religion, all the religions in the major scriptures, they mention about the concept of God, which is the same as Surah class. So anyone who believes in religion and believes in the concept of God will have to agree with the correct concept of God mentioned in Surah class. Now, there is another category of people who may not be convinced just because the religious scriptures have to speak about Almighty God. And this category of atheist, they mainly are educated and they consider science to be as ultimate. Now these atheists, they come and ask me, that Brother Zakir, what you're talking from the Quran, from the Bible, from the Hindu scriptures, from the Jewish scriptures, we aren't concerned. For us, science is ultimate. Why can you prove to us logically and scientifically that God exists? If you prove to me logically and scientifically that God exists, I will accept it. So this talk of mine is also catering to those atheists who believe that science is ultimate. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter number 3 verse number 64, where it says, Kul yahil kitab, say O people of the book, Come to common terms as with us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, na'uda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. That we associate no partners with Him. That we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. Fain tawallah. Say if they turn back. Fakulu shadu. Say e bear witness. Be anna muslimun. That we are Muslims bowing away to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse of the glorious Quran shows you a way how to speak with different types of people. It says, Talaw ila kalimatin sawa im bainana bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'uda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. <clears throat> what will we do tonight? We will use the yardstick of the atheist, that is science and technology, and compare with our yardstick, that is the glorious Quran. 
the first question I'll ask to the atheist is that if there is an object or an equipment who no one in the world has ever seen before, who no one knows about it, and if that object is bought in front of you, and if the question is asked to that atheist, that who is the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this equipment, this object, who no one in the world has seen before? Can you guess what answer that atheist will give you? I would like to repeat the question that if you ask an atheist, that if an object or an equipment is bought in front of him, who no one in the world has seen before, no one knows about it, and if that object is bought in front of him, and the question is asked, that who will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this equipment object, what will his reply be? What will his reply be? Creator? Someone will say manufacturer, someone will say inventor, someone will say producer, whatever the answer is similar. The first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of an equipment or an object to no one in the world knows about it or has seen before, it is the creator or it is the manufacturer, it is the producer, it is the inventor. Don't grapple with the words, it will be somewhat similar. Just keep the answer at the back of your mind. I will ask the question to the atheist that how did this universe come into existence? So the atheist will tell me that our universe initially was one primary nebula. Then there was a big bang. There was a secondary separation which gave rise to galaxies, which gave rise to stars, which gave rise to planets, the sun and the earth on which we live. And when we ask this atheist that when did you come to know about this? So he will tell us that we came to know in the 1970s when a group of scientists, they got the Nobel Prize for describing the creation of the universe. So I will ask the atheist what you came to know hardly about 45, 46 years back is already mentioned in my Quran 1400 years ago. And it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30. Awalam yaral lazina kafuru. Do not the unbelievers see. Anna samawati wal adha. Kaan zarat kan fataqna huma. That the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. This is what you're talking about, the Big Bang, which you came to know hardly 40, 45 years back, is already mentioned in my Quran 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned that in the Quran? So the atheist will tell, it's a fluke. Don't argue. Possible. Don't argue with him. I'll ask him the next question. That, what is the shape of this earth? So he will tell me that previously we thought that the world, that the earth is flat. Now we have come to know that the earth is spherical. And when I ask him the question, when did you come to know the earth is spherical? He will tell me it was in 1579 when Sir Francis Drake sailed around the earth that he proved that the earth is spherical. <coughs> so I will tell him that what you have come to know in 1579, hardly about 450 years back, is already mentioned in my Quran 1400 years ago. The Quran says in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 29, Alam tara anna Allaha yuliju layli fil nahara. Yuliju nahara fil layli. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who merges the night unto the day and merges the day unto the night. This merging is a gradual and slow process. The night gradually and slowly changes into the day and the day gradually and slowly changes into the night. This phenomena is only possible if the earth is spherical. It's not possible if it is flat. I would request the light technician that if they can keep the lights open in the audience, that would be better. I request, yes. Keep it on. This is not a rock show. Yes, at least there should be interaction. I would like to have a look at the audience so I can have the feeling. Jazakallah <laughs> shukran.
unless it is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 5, that the night overlaps and coils over the day, and the day overlaps and coils unto the night. The Arabic word used is kawara, how you coil a turban over the head. Now this coiling of the night unto the day and the day unto the night is only possible if the earth was spherical. It would not have been possible if it was flat. Otherwise, there would have been a sudden change. It's further mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Naziat, chapter number 79, verse number 30. Well, earth the baza zalika dahaha, and thereafter we have made the earth egg shaped. The Arabic word dahaha, one of its meaning is an expanse, and the earth is an expanse. The other meaning is derived from the Arabic word duya, which means an egg. And we know today that the earth is not completely round like a ball, it is flattened from the pole, it is geospherical in shape. And the Arabic word duya doesn't refer to a normal egg, it specifically refers to the egg of an ostrich. And if you have a look at the shape of an egg of an ostrich, that too is geospherical in shape, like flattened from the poles. And the Arabic word duya means where the ostrich lays the egg. Imagine the Quran 1400 years ago exactly specifies the shape of the earth as being geospherical. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran? So the atheist may say, maybe your prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was an intelligent man. Don't argue, continue. I'll ask him the next question. That the light of the moon, is it its own light or reflected light? So the atheist will tell me that previously we thought the light of the moon was its own light. Recently we have come to know that the light of the moon is reflected light. Quran mentioned 1400 years ago in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61. Blessed is he who has made the constellation and placed therein sun having its own light and moon having borrowed light. The Arabic word for sun used in the Quran is shams and its light is always described as siraj, wahaj, or diya, meaning torch, blazing lamp, or shining glory. All of these three mean the light of the sun is its own light. The Arabic word used for the moon is kamar, and its light is always described as nur or munir, meaning a reflection of light or borrowed light. Imagine the Quran mentioned 1400 years ago that the light of the moon is not its own light, but it is a reflected light or borrowed light. And this message is further repeated in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 5, as well as in Surah Nu, chapter number 71, verse number 15 and 16, that the light of the moon is a borrowed light or a reflection of light. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 1400 years ago? And maybe the atheist, after a pause, may say, maybe your prophet, peace be upon him, was really an intelligent man. Don't argue. I'll ask the next question. When I was in school, I passed my school in 1982. When I was in school, I learned in school that the sun, though it revolved, it did not rotate about its own axis. The atheist will say, is that what is mentioned in the Quran? I said, no, no, this is what I learned in school. About 35 years back when I was in school, I had learned that the sun revolved but did not rotate about its own axis. But it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33. Huwa nahara. It's Allah who has created the night and the day. Washamsa wal kamar, the sun and the moon. Kullun fi falki yasbuhun, each one traveling in the orbit with its own motion. The Arabic word yasbuhun is derived from the Arabic word sabaha, which means a motion of a moving body. If I use this word sabaha for a person on the floor, it will not mean he is rolling, it will mean he is walking or running. If I use it for a person in water, it will not mean he is floating, it will mean he is swimming. Similarly, when the Quran mentions it for a celestial body, in the sky, in the heaven, it doesn't mean it is flying, it means it is rotating about its own axis. So Quran says that the sun and the moon, besides revolving, also rotate about its own axis. And today, after science has advanced, 
we can have the image of the sun on a tabletop and we find that the sun has got black spots and it takes approximately 25 days for these black spots to complete one rotation indicating that the sun takes approximately 25 days to complete one rotation and today alhamdulillah all the schools have incorporated this in the textbook when i was in school i was told that the sun does not rotate today all the school textbooks mention that the sun rotates imagine what we came to know recently 30 years back 40 years back 50 years back the quran mentioned 1400 years ago that the sun besides revolving also rotates about the lone axis who could have mentioned this in the quran and the atheist will give a long pause. Don't wait for the reply. You can continue. The Quran says in the Quran says in Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 38. The sun is running its course for a period determined, for a term determined. The Arabic word mustaqar meaning a place determined, it also means a period determined. Today science tells us that the sunlight we have is due to a chemical reaction taking place since millions of years. And one day this chemical reaction will cease, will stop and the sun will cease to exist. But they say that will take another few million years. And today science tells us that the sun along with the solar system is moving in a point in the universe known as solar apex in the point in the Herculean known as Alpha Lyra and it's moving at a speed of 12 miles per second that's what the Quran says that the Sun is running its course for a period determined to a place determined Today, today science tells us that the atmosphere we have above the earth, the sky, as we call in layman's terminology, it acts as a protected ceiling. It prevents, <coughs> it prevents the harmful rays, the X-rays, the ultraviolet rays, from entering the surface of the earth, without which life would have ceased to exist on the face of the earth. This atmosphere outside the earth, which we call a sky, it acts as a protected ceiling. It filters the harmful radiation from reaching the surface of the earth, which is very important for life to exist on the face of the earth. The Quran says, in, Quran says clearly in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 32, that we have made the sky as a protected ceiling the quran refers to the atmosphere outside the earth the sky as a protected ceiling which science has confirmed today when i was in school i had learned that there are three states of matter solid liquid and gas and when i was in school we thought that the space outside the organized astronomical, astronomical system is vacuum. Today, after science advance, we have come to know that there are bridges of matters outside the organized astronomical systems, which we call today as plasma. And today, science says this is the fourth state of matter. The Quran says, in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 59. It is he who has made the heavens and the earth and has made everything in between. That means the Quran says that in between there is no vacuum. There is something God has created. Today, science calls it as plasma, as the fourth state of matter. Furthermore, one of the greatest discoveries made in the subject of astronomy today is that the universe is expanding made by a very famous scientist Edwin Hubble 
that the universe is expanding, it is receding from one another. And Quran says in Surah Dariyat, chapter number 51, verse number 47, that we have created the vastness of space, the expanding universe. The Arabic word used is muqsiuna, the expanding universe. Imagine, the Quran mentions 1400 years ago that our universe is expanding, which we came to know hardly 100 years back. There may be certain skeptics who will say, it is nothing great that the Quran speaks about astronomy since the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy. I do agree with them that the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy. But I'd like to remind them, it was centuries after the Quran was revealed that the Arabs became advanced in the field of astronomy and not the vice versa. So it is from the Quran that the Arabs learned about astronomy and not the vice versa. In the field of physics, there is a very famous theory known as theory of atomism, which was propounded 23 centuries ago by the people called a Democrats. And they said that the smallest part of matter is an atom, and the atom cannot be divided. And in Arabic, we call this a zarra atom, which is the smallest part of matter, which cannot be divided, is called as zarra. And it's also mentioned in the Quran. The Arabic word zarra is also mentioned in the Quran. But today, after science has advanced, we have come to know that though atom is the smallest part of matter, having the characteristic of the element, that too can be divided into protons and neutrons, and the Quran speaks about Zarra, so someone will think that if the Quran speaks about Zarra, about atom, that means the Quran is outdated. Let us analyze what does the Quran speak about Zarra. It's mentioned in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 61, that when you tell to the unbelievers that the last day would come, they will say it will never come. Tell them it will surely come with the permission of thy Lord, in whose record is perpetual things as small as the atom and things greater and smaller than the atom. That means the Quran is not outdated, the Quran is updated. That the Quran says that every minutest detail as small as the atom is mentioned in the record perpetual and things smaller and greater than the atom is also mentioned. That means the Quran tells there are things smaller and greater than the atom. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 1400 years ago? In the field of hydrology, when I was in school and we all learned in school about the water cycle. The water cycle that we learned in the school, it says that the water evaporates from the ocean, it forms into clouds, the clouds move in the interior, they join, and the water falls from the clouds, and the water table is replenished. This water cycle was first described by Sir Bernard Palissy in the year 1580. Previously, even in 7th century BC, Tales of Miletus, he said, it was the spray of the ocean which was picked up by the winds which fell into the interior as rain. People did not know from where did the underground water come. They thought it was the pressure of the wind on the ocean which thrust the water into the interior. And they thought that there was a secret passage, which at the time of Plato they called it as the Tartarus, through which the water flowed back. People believed till as late as 17th century, even Descartes believed in it. And Aristotle, he believed in 19th century that the underground water came from the mountain caverns which fed water to it. Today we know that the underground water that we have is due to the seepage of the rainwater in cracks in the ground. It's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Zumar chapter number 39, 
verse number 21 seest thou not it is he who sends down water from the sky and leads it in grounds in cracks and causes sown fields of varying colors to grow the quran says in surah room chapter number 30 verse number 24 it is he who sends on water from the sky and then gives life to the earth after it is dead the quran says in surah mu'minun chapter number 23 verse number 18 that it is we who send on water from the sky and we are able to store it we are even able to drain it the quran says in surah hijar chapter number 15 verse number 22 that we cause fecundating winds the arabic word is lawaki coming from the word lakaha meaning to fecundate and today science tells us that the water that comes from the sky is due to various reasons one of them is when pollen grains are picked up by the wind and they fecundate the clouds you find water emerging the second reason is when the clouds join together they form into a heap and the water falls down from the sky the quran says in surah nur chapter number 24 verse number 43 that the clouds move slowly and gently then they join together and water emerges from the sky the quran says in surah room chapter number 30 verse number 48 that the the water evaporates forms into clouds the clouds move in the interior and they fall down as rain the quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail in several places in surah araf chapter number seven verse number 57 in surah rod chapter number 13 verse number 17 in it's mentioned in the quran in surah furqan chapter number 25 verse number 48 and 49 it's mentioned in the quran it's clearly mentioned in Father, chapter number 35, verse number 9. It's mentioned in Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 34. It's mentioned in Surah Jasha, chapter number 45, verse number 5. In Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 8 and 9. It's mentioned in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 30. In Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verse number 67 to 68. It's mentioned in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 11. I can go on giving only references in the glorious Quran which talks about the water cycle in great detail. Who could have mentioned about the water cycle in so much great detail which we came to know hardly 500 years back? In the field of geology, today the geologists they tell us that the earth on which we live, the deeper layers, they are hot and fluid, and they cannot sustain life. The superficial layer is a thin crust on which we live. And the crust is very thin, hardly 1 to 10 to 30 miles in thickness. And there are high chances that this superficial crust will shake. The radius of the earth is about 3,950 miles. And the superficial layer is very thin, hardly 1 to 30 miles in thickness. There are high possibility that the superficial crust will shake. It is due to the folding phenomena which gives rise to mountain ranges which prevents the earth from shaking. So today the geologists tell us it is the mountain ranges which prevent the earth from shaking. The Quran says in Surah Naba, chapter number 78, verse number six and seven, that we have made the earth as an expanse, while Jibal Autada and the mountains as stakes. The Arabic word Autad, it means stakes. It means tent pegs. Like when we put a tent peg into the ground, the portion that we see above the ground is a very small portion. The major portion of the tent peg is deep underground. So the Quran says that we have made on the earth mountain standing firm as tent pegs. And the Quran repeats this message in Surah Ghashiyah, chapter number 88, verse number 19, and Surah Naziyat, chapter number 79, verse number 32, that we have placed on the earth mountain standing firm. There is a book by the name of The Earth, which is referred in most of the universities while teaching the subject of geology. 
One of its authors is Dr. Frank Press, who was previously the president of the Academy of Sciences in USA and was also the scientific advisor to the previous ex-president of USA, that Jimmy Carter. And he draws in this book, The Earth, Mountains, and it shows that the mountains have got roots, it got wedges, and the roots go deep underground. And the mountain above the ground is a very small portion, like the tip of an iceberg. The iceberg that is there below water is the major portion. What you see above the water is a small portion. And Dr. Frank Press says it is due to the mountains that give stability to the earth. If the mountain weren't there, then the earth would have shaken. Quran says exactly the same in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 31. In Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 15. And Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 5, that we have placed on the earth mountain standing firm, lest it would shake with you. Imagine the Quran mentions the exact function of the mountain as to prevent the earth from shaking, which we have come to know recently. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran? In the field of oceanology, the Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 53, that it is he who has let free two bodies of flowing water, one sweet and palatable, and the other salty and bitter. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. Previously, the commentators of the Quran, they could not understand what does the Quran mean by saying that. They knew that there were two types of water, sweet and salty, but they could not understand what the Quran means by saying they meet, but they do not mix. Today we have come to know that whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows. This homogenizing area, the Quran refers to as barzakh, unseen barrier. Imagine what science has discovered recently. The Quran mentioned 1400 years ago that whenever the sweet water falls, it flows into the salt water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows. And we can see this in several places in the world. You can see in the southernmost tip of South Africa, when you go to Cape Town, you can see this phenomena. You can see this phenomena in Egypt when River Nile flows into the Mediterranean Sea. And the best example is the Gulf Stream. It starts in the Gulf of Mexico, then goes northwards towards the east coast of USA. Then it moves eastwards towards the west coast of Europe. It flows for thousands of miles. And if you're going in a boat and you pick up water from one side of the Gulf Stream and the water from the other side, you will find that one is sweet and the other is salty. Even the temperature between the two waters differ. Imagine. Quran speaks about this phenomena 1400 years ago, which we came to know recently. In the subject of oceanology, there is a verse in the Quran, in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 40, which says, as to the state of the unbeliever, as to those who reject our sign, the unbelievers, their state is like the depth of darkness in a vast deep sea. Waves topped with waves topped with dark clouds. When a man stretches out his hand, he cannot see. For to him, for to whom God gives no light, light does not reach. This verse of the Quran along with the translation was taken to Prophet Durga Rao, who was, who was a professor in marine geology in Jeddah, in the University of King Abdul Aziz. And when he was asked to comment on this verse, he said that this verse does not speak about a normal sea. It speaks about a vast deep sea. And previously, we human beings, we did not know that the depth of the ocean was dark because a human being could not dive more than 20 to 30 meters. He could not survive. After the submarines were invented 
in 1900 that we have come to know that the depths of the ocean are dark. And Professor Durga Rao said that the darkness in the wild deep ocean is because of various phenomena. Number one, when light enters the water, it gets absorbed in layers. And we learned in school that the light has got seven colors. Vip pure, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. So when the light enters the sea or the ocean, the first 10 to 15 meters of the light, it absorbs the red color. So if a person goes underwater, more than 25 to 30 meters, and if he starts to bleed, he will not be able to see the red color of his blood. Because red color does not reach that portion. And I remember, a few years back, I had gone to Mauritius. And I had the opportunity of going into a submarine, deep underwater. So when I remembered this, I took a chocolate paper of Kit Kat, red color. And as the submarine kept on going down, the red color disappeared. The moment I owned my mobile and I gave external light, I could see the red color. That means the red color is absorbed by the first 15 to 20 meters. Later on, from 30 to 50 meters, the orange color is absorbed. From 50 to 100 meters, the yellow color is absorbed. Yellow color is absorbed. From 100 to 200 meters, the green color is absorbed. And beyond 200 meters, the blue color is absorbed. And above that, it's violet and indigo. So the light is absorbed in successive layers. That's how you find layers of darkness, as the Quran says. Layers of darkness, one on top of the other. Waves topped with waves. What does the Quran mean by saying waves topped with waves? Today science has advanced and we have come to know that the waves that we see on the superficial part of the ocean or the sea is what we see with the eyes. It is called as superficial waves. But when you go underwater, even underwater, there are internal waves. This internal waves, it divides the ocean into two parts. The superficial part and the deep part. The superficial part is warm and lit up. The deep part is dark and cold. The Quran says, waves topped with waves topped with dark clouds. When the sunlight is given from the sun, many a times it is absorbed by the clouds. That which is not absorbed by the clouds, it hits the ocean. Some of it is reflected. The balance goes in the ocean. It is absorbed in successive layers. So the Quran says, the state of the unbeliever is like the depths of darkness in a vast deep sea. Waves topped with waves topped with dark clouds. For to who he gives no light, light does not reach him. If a man stretches out his hand, he cannot see. For to whom he gives no light, light does not reach. <coughs> so Prophet Durga Rao said, this information in the Quran cannot be given by a human being because we came to know about this recently and the Quran is 1400 years ago. In the field of biology, the Quran says in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, we have created every living thing from water. Will you not then believe? Imagine in the deserts of Arabia, where there is scarcity of water, the Quran says every living thing is made from water. Today, after science that once we have come to know that the basic cell of every living creature, it's a cell which contains cytoplasm, which contains about 50 to 90 percent water. Today, science tells us that every living creature contains about 50 to 90% water. 
and imagine Quran mentioned 1400 years ago that every living thing is made from water who could have believed in this in the subject of mathematics there is something called as theory of probability that means if you want to make a wild guess depending upon the options that are available the chances that if you make a wild guess and you will be correct is one divided by the chances available let me give you an example for better understanding for example if i toss a coin if you make a wild guess the chances you'll be correct is one upon two because there are two options heads or tails if you make a wild guess whether you say heads or tails the chances you'll be correct is one upon two it is 50 percent if i toss a coin twice the chances that you'll be correct both the times is one upon two into one upon two is one upon four is 50 percent of 50 percent is 25 percent if i toss a coin thrice the chances that you'll be correct all the three times is one upon two multiplied by one upon two multiplied by one upon two is one upon eight is 50 percent or 50 percent or 50 percent is 12.5 percent this is called as theory of probability for example if i throw a dice a cube has got six sides so there are six options if you make a wild guess the chances that you'll be correct is one upon six if i throw a dice twice and the chances I'll be correct both the times is 1 upon 6 by 1 upon 6 is 1 upon 36. If I throw a dice thrice, the chances I'll be correct all the three times is 1 upon 6 by 1 upon 6 by 1 upon 6 is 1 divided by 216. This is called as theory of probability. Let us put this theory of probability to the test of the Quran. <coughs> You know, some atheists say that it's a fluke, it's a fluke, it's a fluke. Let's try and analyze. And if we ask, what is the shape of the earth? Maybe a person can think of 30 different shapes. Some may say flat, some may say square, some may say heptagonal, some may say hexagonal, some may say spherical. 30. The chances if you make a wild guess, you will be correct, is 1 upon 30. The Quran says, the light of the moon is not its own light, it's a reflected light. If you make a wild guess, the chances are two. Either the light of the moon is its own light or reflected light. The chances if you make a wild guess, you being correct, is 1 upon 2. The chances that you will be both the time correct, that the earth is spherical and the light of the moon is reflected light is 1 upon 30 by 1 upon 2 is 1 upon 60. The Quran says that every living thing is made of water. Imagine in the deserts of Arabia where there was scarcity of water. If someone has to guess what every living thing is made of, then the last thing he'll guess is about water. He may think about sand, he may think about stone, he may think about brick, he may think about wood, he may think about tree. Water would come last. Maybe 10,000 things you can think of what living thing is made of. If someone makes a wild guess that it is water and it turns out to be correct, it's 1 upon 30. If someone makes a wild guess for all these three things, the shape of the earth is spherical and the light of the moon is reflected light and everything is made from water would be 1 upon 30 by 1 upon 2 is 1 upon 10,000 is equal to 1 upon 60,000 percentage wise 0 0.00017 imagine with three things only the chances of probability is 1 upon 60,000 1 upon 600,000 sorry which is equal to 0 0.00017 only with three things, the answer is coming to 0 0.00017. And today, ma today's match tells us that anything 10 raised to negative 50, 10 raised to 50, in mathematics it is zero. And there are more than a thousand verses in the Quran which speak about science. 
with three verses only the answer came to 1 upon 600,000. That is 0 0.00017. If you apply all these 1,000 verses, surely the answer will come 10 raised to much more than 50 zero. So if you put this theory of probability, the, the probability, probability of this being a wild guess according to mathematics is zero. In the field of botany, the Quran says, Quran says Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 53, that it is we who send on water from the sky and then bring with it diverse pairs of plants, each separate from the other. We knew previously that human beings have got sexes, male and female, but we did not know that the plants even have sexes, male and female. It's hardly 300 years back, 400 years back, we came to know that even the plants have got sexes, male and female. The Quran mentioned this 14 years ago. Quran says in Surah Raj, chapter number 13, verse number 3, we have created every kind of fruit in pair. The Quran says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 45, we have created every we, we have created every animal from water. The Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 54, we have created every human being from water. So here the Quran says that not only the human beings have sexes and the animals have sexes, even the plants and fruits have got sexes. In the field of zoology, Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 38, that it is he who has created every animal that walks on the earth and every bird that flies in the air to live in communities like the human being. Today science tells us that like the human beings, even the birds and animals live in communities. Imagine this is mentioned 14 years ago. Quran says in Surah Nahal chapter number 16, verse number 68 and 69, that it is the Lord who has taught the bee to build its cells in hills, in human habitations, and to eat of what the earth produces, and to find the spacious path of thy Lord with great skill. What does the Quran mean by saying that he has taught the bee to find the spacious path of thy Lord with great skill? It was in 1973 that it was a scientist by the name of Sir Fawn Fresh we discovered and told about the behavior of the bee. And he said that whenever a bee finds a new garden or a new flower, it goes and tells its fellow bee the exact direction of the new flower or the new garden by a process known as the bee dance. The Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 16 and 69, it says that the worker bee is a female bee. Previously, we thought that the worker bee was the male bee. That's the reason Shakespeare, in his play, Henry IV, he says, <coughs> it is the male bee which are the soldier bee, and they report to the king. Today, science tells us the worker bee is not the male bee, it's the female bee, and they don't report to the king, but they report to the queen. Imagine, the Quran mentions the sex of the worker bee as being female. 1400 years ago, which we came to know recently. The Quran says in Surah Ankabur, chapter number 29, verse number 41, that as to those who take for protectors, anyone besides Almighty God, they build for themselves houses like that of the spider. For verily, the house of the spider is fragile. Besides mentioning that all those who take for protection anyone besides Almighty God, they build for themselves houses like the spider, and we know the house of the spider is fragile, it is flimsy. It even speaks about the relationship of the family of the spider. And today science tells us that many a times the female spider kills the male spider and is called as the black widow. Imagine, the Quran mentions the relationship of the spider being weak, 1400 years ago. The Quran says in Surah Namal, chapter number 27, verse number 17 and 18, that when Solomon, with his host of men, jinn, and birds, when Solomon and his army approached a lowly ants, approached a valley of lowly ants, one of the ants said, 
O ye ants, get into the habitations, lest Solomon and his army will trample you beneath the feet. People may think, what kind of a fairy tale book is the Quran? The ants, they're talking among themselves. Today, after science advance, we have come to know the animal or insect which has the closest resemblance to that of the human being, it is the ant. It buries the dead the same way as the human beings. It has a sophisticated method of labor in which it has got foreman, manager, supervisor, worker, etc. They very often meet to chat. They have a sophisticated method of communication. They even have marketplaces where they exchange goods. You know how we have souk, where they exchange goods. And if the grain begins to bud, when they store the grain, they chop off the bud as though they knew that budding will cause the rotting of the grain. And if they store the grain, and if the grain gets wet, they get the grain in the sunlight to dry as though they knew that humidity will cause the rotting of the grain. You know, when I was a kid, I used to wonder, where are the ants taking the grain? Today, science tells us that the ants take it in the sunlight to dry as though they knew that humidity will cause the rotting of the grain. In the field of medicine, in the field of medicine, the Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 69, that from the belly of the bee, we give you a drink of varying colors in which there is healing for humankind. Previously, we did not know that honey was obtained from the belly of the bee. We came to know recently, 300 years back, 400 years back. And today, science tells us that the honey is rich in vitamin K and fructose. And it even has mild antiseptic properties. No wonder honey was used to cover, in World War II, the Russian soldiers, they used honey to cover the wound. And due to the density, germs and bacteria was prevented to grow and healing was done with leaving of very little scar tissue. And if a person is suffering from an allergy of a particular plant, if honey obtained from that plant is given, that person starts developing resistance to that allergy. In the field of physiology, there's one verse in the Quran which speaks about the blood circulation and the production of milk. It was Ibn Nafis who 600 years after the Quran was revealed, he spoke about the blood circulation. And 400 years later, William Harvey made it famous to the world, 1,000 years after the Quran was revealed. When we read in school books, we read about William Harvey. We don't read about, we don't read about Ibn Nafis. It was Ibn Nafis who first described the blood circulation. In a nutshell, the food that we eat, it enters into the stomach. From the stomach, it goes into the intestine. And from the intestine, via the bloodstream, it enters almost all the different organs of the body via the bloodstream and many a time via the complex media of the liver. It even enters the mammary gland, which is responsible for the production of milk. The Quran speaks about the blood circulation and the production of milk in a nutshell. It's mentioned in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 66. Verily in the cattle is a lesson for you. We give you to drink from what is within the body. Coming from a conjunction between the constituents of of the intestine and blood, milk, which is pure for you to have. The same message repeated in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 21, that verily in the cattle is a lesson for you. We give you to drink from what is within the body, blood, which is pure for you, and of the meat, you can eat. So Quran speaks about the blood circulation and the production of milk in a nutshell. In the field of embryology, there were a group of Arabs who collected all the data given in the Quran dealing with embryology and the Hadith and they translated into English and they took it to Prophet Keith Moore and followed the verse of the Quran in Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 43 which says Fas'alu ahal zikri in kuntu la ta'lamun If you don't know, ask the person who is knowledgeable and Prophet Keith Moore at that time was one of the highest authority in the field of embryology. He was the head of the anatomy department. He was the head of the department of anatomy in Toronto, in the University of Toronto. And when he was shown these verses of the Quran, 
and was asked to comment, he said, most of the things which the Quran speaks about embryology is perfectly matching with later discoveries of embryology. But there are a couple of verses which I cannot say that they are right. Neither can I say they are wrong because I myself do not know about it. And two such verses were the first two verses of the Quran to be revealed of Surah Alaq, of Surah Ikra, chapter number 96, verse number 1 and 2, which says, Ikra bismi rabbi kallazi khalaq, khalakal insana min alaq. Read, recite, and proclaim in the name of thy Lord who created, who created the human being from something which clings a leash like substance. So Prophet Keith Moore said, I do not know whether the early stages of an embryo looks like a leech or not. So he went in his laboratory and under a powerful microscope observed the early stages of an embryo and was astonished at the striking resemblance. And he said that if you had asked me these questions after 80 questions were asked, the 30 years back, it was asked to him in the early 1980s. If you had asked me this question 30 years before, I would not be able to answer more than 50% because embryology is a new development of medicine. The Quran says in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 5, 6, and 7, that does not man think from what is created. He is created from a drop emitted from a space between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. What does the Quran mean by saying human beings have been created from a drop emitted from a space between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib? Today we have come to know that the genital organs in a human being in the embryonic age. Embryology means a study of the development of a child in the mother's womb. In the embryonic age, the genital organs in the male, the testes, in the female, the ovary, they originate from a space which is present where the kidney is present between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. Later on, they descend down in the male via the inguinal canal, the testes descend to the scrotum, and in the female, via, it descends down to the true pelvis, that is the ovary. Even after they descend in the adult life, yet they receive their blood supply from the same space between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib, and the venous returns goes back to the same space. Even the nerve supply comes from the same space between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. Imagine, Quran mentions this 1400 years ago. The Quran says, we have created the human being from Anutva in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 5, and in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 13 that we have created the human being from a nutfa. Nutfa means a minute quantity of liquid. And today science tells us that one sperm is sufficient to fertilize the ova. This one sperm, the Quran refers to as nutfa. The Quran further says in Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 8, we have created the human being from solala. Solala in Arabic means the best part of the whole. One sperm is sufficient to fertilize the ovum out, out of the 300 million sperm. So one sperm out of the 300 million sperm, the Quran refers to as solala, the best part of the whole. Furthermore, the Quran says in Surah Insan, chapter number 76, verse number 2, we have created the human being from a minute quantity of mingled fluid. It says, Nutfat and Amshaj, a minute quantity of mingled fluid. There are many fluids which are responsible for the birth of the child. Besides the fluid from the saminal vesicles, it's also the, the fluid of the prostatic gland. It's also the fluid of the testicles. All this put together, the human being is born. Furthermore, furthermore, in the subject of genetics, we have come to know that the 23rd pair of chromosome is responsible for deciphering the sex of the child. If it's XX, it's a female. If it's an XY, it's a male. Today, science tells us it is the male sperm. I would request that the parents of the children, that if, if the child is having a competition with me, I would request them to take them behind the stage, because we are disturbing the audience and the recording. 
I request that all the parents who have infants in their arm and if they're making a noise, please, please don't disturb the lecture. I would request you to please go and see on the screen. That will not cause a disturbance to the recording, inshallah. Today, science tells us it is the male sperm which is responsible for deciphering the sex of the child. If X of the male takes part in the fertilization, a female is born. If the Y takes part, then a male is born. And Quran says in Surah Najam, chapter number 53, verse number 45 and 46, that it is Almighty God who has created the human beings into sexes, male and female, from a minute quantity of liquid gushing forth from a male. So it is the male fluid which is responsible for, for the sex of the child. A similar message is repeated in Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number 37 to 39, that we have created the human being from Nusfatin Min Mani Yumna, a minute quantity of sperm, then made it into sexes, male and female. The Quran says, it is the minute quantity of sperm which is responsible for deciphering the sex of the child. Furthermore, the Quran says, it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 5, as well as verse number 6, that we have created the human beings in three veils of darkness. We have created the human beings in the womb of the mother in stages one after the other in three veils of darkness. Prophet Keith Moore said, these three veils of darkness refers to the anterior abdominal wall, it refers to the uterine wall, and the amniochorionic membrane. Furthermore, the Quran says in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 5, that we have created the human being from a minute quantity of liquid, then made it into a nutfa, into a minute quantity, made it into a minute quantity of liquid, then made it into a mudga, that is chewed up long, partly formed and partly unformed. When Prophet Marshall Johnson was showed this verse of the Quran, he said that there is no better description than the Quran when it refers to the embryo at this time saying partly formed and partly unformed because some cells at this moment are differentiated, some are undifferentiated. Some organs are complete, some are incomplete. There is no better description than the description of the Quran partly formed and partly unformed. The Quran speaks about the various embryological stages in great detail. In Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14, where it says that we have created the human beings from a minute quantity of nutfa, then made it into, made the nutfa into alaka, that's a leech-like substance, then made the alaka into mudga, a chewed-like lump. Then clothed, then made, then made it into an izama, that is bone, then clothed the bone with flesh. Glory be to Allah, who is the best to create. This verse of the Quran speaks about the various embryological stages in great detail. That first for the minute quantity of liquid, then made it into an alaka, a leech-like stump, leech-like leech -like substance. Then made the alaka into mudga, a chewed-like lump. Then made the mudga into izaman. They clothed it with flesh. Glory be to Allah, who is the best to create. Prophet Keith Moore said, there is the description given in modern embryology, stage one, stage two, stage three, is confusing. The description given in the Quran, based on shape, is far more superior and accurate. Who could have mentioned all this in the Quran? Due to shortage of time, I'll just mention two or three more scientific facts. Quran says in Surah Insan, chapter number 76, verse number 2, and Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 5, that we have made the human beings and giving them the faculty of hearing and sight. First comes the sense of hearing, then comes the sense of sight. And today science tells us the sense of hearing develops by the fifth month of pregnancy, and the sense of sight, the eye splits open, in the seventh month of pregnancy. Furthermore, the Quran says, Quran says in Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number 3 and 4, that when the unbelievers say, how will Almighty God be able to reassemble our bones after we have died 
after we have been buried and our bones have got disintegrated, how will he be able to reconstruct our bones, the very tips of the finger? What does the Quran mean by saying we can not only reconstruct the bones, we can reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of the finger? It was Sir Francis Gold in 1880 that discovered the fingerprinting method and said that no two fingerprints, even in a million people, are identical. And today, the police, the CID, the CIA, they use the fingerprinting method to identify the criminal. Imagine, Quran mentions about the fingerprinting method 1400 years ago, which we came to know hardly 200 years back. I would like to just mention one additional scientific fact before I end my talk. It was Professor Tarot Dagashan, who hails from Thailand, who spent a great deal of time in doing research on pain receptors. Previously, we doctors, we thought that only the brain was responsible for the feeling of pain. Today, we have come to know there are certain receptors in the skin known as pain receptors, which are very important for the feeling of pain. That's the reason if a patient of burn injury comes, the doctor takes a pin and pricks it in the area of burn. If the patient feels pain, the doctor is happy. It's a superficial burn. If the patient does not feel pain, the doctor is sad. It's a deep burn. The pain receptors have been destroyed. There's a verse in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse 56, which says, as to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them into the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. As often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain, indicating there is something in the skin which is responsible for the feeling of pain, which today we call as pain receptors. When this verse was shown to Prophet Dagradagashan, he was shocked <coughs> that how could a book 14 years ago talk about pain receptors which we came to recently. Later on, after verifying the translation and speaking with Professor Keith Moore, etc., in the medical conference, in the ninth medical conference, in Riyadh, in the conference itself, he said the Shahada and said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Now, who could have mentioned this in the Quran? Now, when you ask the atheist, who could have mentioned this in the Quran? The only reply I can give you is the reply I gave earlier. It is the creator. It is the manufacturer. It is the inventor. It is the producer. This creator, this manufacturer, this inventor, we Muslim call as Allah. So the only scientific answer you can give that who could have mentioned in the Quran 14 years ago, it is the creator, the manufacturer, the inventor of all the whole universe of the human beings and everything that exists. This we Muslims call as Allah. And what did I do? It is mentioned by a very famous scientist by the name Albert Einstein, who was a Nobel Prize winner, he said that science without religion is lame and religion without science is blind. Let me repeat the statement that Albert Einstein, uh, Albert Einstein the famous physicist said that science without religion is lame and religion without science is blind. Let me remind you that the glorious Quran is not a book of science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E, -E, but it's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. It's a book of ayats. And there are more than 6,000 ayats, more than 6,000 signs in the glorious Quran, out of which more than 1,000 speak about science. People may say that, am I trying to prove the Quran to be the word of God with science? I said, no, I am taking the yardstick of the atheist, the yardstick of the intellectual today, which is science, 
and comparing with my yastik the Quran. My yastik the Quran, I believe, is far superior to science. I am comparing the yastik of the atheists with our yastik and trying to prove that what they came to know recently, 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back, 500 years back, is already mentioned in my yastik, the glorious Quran. That's the reason Francis Bacon, <coughs> a very famous philosopher, he said that little knowledge of science makes you an atheist, but an in-depth knowledge of science makes you a believer in God. That's the reason. Today, scientists, they are not eliminating God, they are eliminating models of God. La ilaha illallah, they are eliminating models of God. This cannot be God, this cannot be God. But they are not eliminating God. That's the reason I start my talk with the verse of the glorious Quran, where Allah says that he will see to it that he will prove to every human being about the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that God is one until it is clear to them that this is the truth. So no one can tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment that I did not know about it. Whether you and I do da'wah or not, Allah says in the Quran, I started my talk and I would like to end my talk with the verse of the glorious Quran which is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Fusilat. Chapter number 41, verse number 53, which says, Sanurihim ayatina fil afakhi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana annolak. That soon we shall show them our signs in the further region of the horizons until it is clear to them that this is the truth. Wa akhru dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alam. Uh, brothers and sisters, we would like to thank Sheikh Zakir for his uh, talk. Uh, before we go to questions and answers, um, we have four people. Uh, who wants to declare Shahada? So we uh, they can come to the stage. Okay. Uh, wait, wait a second. Now a question. But I wish you have many questions and answers. It's very easy to become a citizen of the Muslim nation. All you have to say is the password, which Sheikh Zakir, inshallah, will teach it to our new brothers. As we say, we are all brothers in humanity. We are all humans, whatever religion we are. But just like citizenship, you know, he's from this country or that country. When they declare this very nice password, which is known to everybody, it's not a password, then they become, they, they gain a special brotherhood, which is the brotherhood in Islam. Just be careful. So you can stand. May I know your name, brothers? Can I have the names? Jomar. 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 Huh? Jomar. Yeah. Your brother? My name is Vincent. Wilson. I'm Gilbert. Sorry? Gilbert. Gilbert. Stephen. 
citizen. I would like to ask you a question that do you believe that there is one God? All of you? All of you believe? And do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Do you believe? Do you believe that, that Jesus, peace be upon him? Is he God or is he a messenger? Messenger. What do you believe? Messenger, mashallah. Messenger? Mashallah. Yes, that is one of the fundamentals of faith that we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not God but is the messenger of God. I would like to ask you. He has one question. The last question. Fine, you have a question. Yes, fine. Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Zakir. Assalamu alaikum. So, uh, beginning from me, I was raised Christian. Uh, believe me or not, from from uh, from I woke up from the uh, from the childhood and become a mature, I didn't open Bible. That is really true. And everyone, and even uh, even until now, but someone came to me, then re, uh, introduced me about Islam. So one thing left in me since uh, last 15 days, I started to read Quran and search about Islam. So one thing that I want to know regarding the Islam and regarding regarding the uh, regarding uh, become a Muslim, I uh, I prepared some questions. I, I prepared some uh, notes here, which is uh, I found in the in the YouTube in other articles in the internet that it says uh, uh, this words is came from Prophet Muhammad, peace upon peace upon him. So I want to read this. Then I want uh, an answer from uh, Doctor Zakir regarding in uh, clarifications. I don't have any doubt to become a Muslim. I believe, I believe in one religion. But then I want to clarify first before my heart open and accept the, the Islam and be, become a Muslim. Sure. Can I have the question, please? Yeah. So, uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, "Whoever killed a person having a treaty with with the Muslims shall not smell the smell of paradise through its smell." is perceived from the distance of the 40 years. Another thing, if anyone kills a man who grants protection prematurely, Allah will forbid him to enter the paradise. Another thing, Allah the, mighty, the, Almighty, uh, Allah the Almighty tortures those who torture people in this life. So my question is, is there any human... Can you repeat the second and third hadith, please? The second. The, the second. Can you come in the front here, please? Okay. I'm looking at this. Yes. The second is, if anyone kills a man who he, who he grants protection prematurely, Allah will forbid him to enter paradise. So my question for this uh, statement from uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is there any written in the book that... Can, can I request that the parent can take the child out, please? I request the father, can you take the child down, please? Jazakallah shukur. I request the volunteers. I believe there are less volunteers here. If there are volunteers here, if you avoid me telling on the stage, your ears should be sharp enough. It is mentioned very clearly that children below the age of eight should not be allowed here. So you see to it that the volunteers, the ears should be sharp enough. The moment you hear the cry the first time, the second time it should not be heard. So I request the volunteers to be active and I request the parents themselves to do it voluntary because the Sharia says let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. We are having this, this program is being telecast to 100 million people. So please, please cooperate. You wouldn't like to be the cause of 100 million people not hearing correctly. So I request the parents, the moment your child cries, see to it that you move your child outside, outside the theater, please. Jazakallah. Can you continue, please? Okay. Back to, uh, back to my question. So if there is any written in the book that, uh, or in the Quran, says that there is a one person, a human being, uh, sent by God or give the authority that God that kills a person, whatever this person has, uh, has sinned or even the heavy sins. So according as what I said, Allah Almighty tortures the person who tortures human beings. 
So that what's is my your, question. What's your question? I didn't understand. Is there any human being that Allah that uh, Allah gives permit permission to kill a person? Just uh, what we did. Just what what well, happened you know, and uh, nowadays. The brother asking a question that does Allah give permission for you to kill any other human being? The hadith is called that if there is a tie, like the hadith he quoted three hadiths. One hadith says that if there is a peace treaty between the Muslims and the others, you have to protect that person. If you don't, then you will not enter Jannah. The second says that you cannot kill a person who is under peace treaty. If you do that, you shall not enter Jannah. All these verses talk about you should not kill any other human being which is under treaty. There's also another verse in the Quran which I quoted in my talk, which is a very important verse in the Quran. In Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 32, we say that if anyone kills any other human being, whether it be a Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if he saves any human being, he has saved the whole of notion. So according to the Quran, as well as the Hadith, you cannot kill any innocent human being. And your question, who can you kill? Only that person, as the Quran says, unless you cannot kill any other human, unless he spreads corruption. So if a person spreads corruption in the land, then you can kill him. Do not kill any other human being unless he commits murder. If someone has murdered someone, and then if you murder him, Quran gives permission. Secondly, if he spreads corruption in the land, for example, if a man goes and rapes a woman, it is spreading corruption. So the penalty in Islam for rape is death penalty. So the only two places where you can kill any other human being is that if he is spreading corruption in the land or if he has committed murder. Spreading corruption can include many things. For example, as I said, committing rape of a woman. So if these two things are there, these two are the only time where death penalty can be given and the Sharia specifies is where death penalty can be given. If you read the Hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are cases where death penalty can be prescribed. In all the other cases, if you kill any other innocent human being, if he is not spreading corruption in the land, and if he has not committed murder, then it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. Hope that answers the question. Hope you are convinced. Brother, hope you are convinced with the answer. Yes. So would you like to take the shahada now? A request of the brother again. I prefer that the people should be down. They should not be called on the stage so I can interact. I'm turning my back to the audience, to the camera. Okay, as I was saying, that all of you believe that there is one God? Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? And you believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God? Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Are you doing out of your own free will? Out of your own free will? Are you doing it out of your own free will? Is anyone forcing you? Okay, I'll just say it in Arabic. The same thing, that there is one God and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger and you repeat it. Inshallah after me. Ashadu. Can you give the microphone please? Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness that, that there is no God, there is no God, but Allah, but Allah, and and I bear witness, I bear witness that that Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, is the messenger, is the messenger and servant of Allah. Servant of Allah. Mashallah, we go Muslim, and I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that may He grant all of you Jannah, Inshallah.
I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah grant all these probes of the Jannah and through them may He guide other peoples to the straight path of Islam. Jazakallah. The questions and answers. There are four stations. Um, each person can only have one question, and uh, the questions will rotate along the stations. There are four stations here, and there are two stations in the back. And the question, it's better to be about the subject of the lecture. Uh, I, uh, also, it, it, it's better if the question is brief and to the point, and the questioner has to tell us first about, uh, has to tell us his name and his profession. And please, we would like our brothers and sisters whom are non-Muslims to have the priority of questioning. Uh, so we request our brothers and sisters whom are Muslims to give them the chance. And uh, we will have one question from a young brother who is uh, uh, suffering from a handicap. We will give him the priority. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself to you. Uh, my name is Ghanem. I'm 14 years old. And I'm in grade 8. And I'm uh, studying grade in Doha Academy School. Dr. Dakar, I don't have any question. But Dr. Dakar, welcome to my country, Qatar. A pleasure to meet you. You may ask me what I'm doing here. I'm only 14 years old because I love God and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and because I'm proud to be Muslim. Your lectures are motivating me to stay strong and defend our religion and beliefs. It hurts me when I read, when I read uh, comments in social media, mocking the prophet and insulting our great religion. I'm really doing my best to learn how to confront such people and how to spread the prophet trustworthy words. Once again, welcome to Qatar. Trust me, it feels like home because we feel that you are one of our big family and it was really my dream to see you. And I always follow your lectures on YouTube. And I love you so much. Masha, President, know about you. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He give you shifa as well as make you a mujahid. That means to, to clarify the misconception that is being spread about Islam. And today, as we are aware, the social media, and the media is the strongest weapon in the world. And alhamdulillah, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he make you clarify the misconceptions regarding Islam, and may through you guide many people to the path of Islam, inshallah. There are four stages here and two in the back, and there are people at each microphone or station who will uh, allow someone to start questioning. And then the questions will go from one microphone to the other so that everyone will have one chance. As was mentioned, as I mentioned with the coordinator, there are four microphones that have been arranged here. One on my right, the second on my left. Where are the other two microphones? Yes, one behind on my right and one behind on my left. I think two microphones are for the ladies and two are for the gents. And I request that the ladies should line up at the microphone which is meant for the ladies. Can the people... Can some volunteer raise the hand? Which microphone is for the ladies? Which microphone is for the ladies? On the right on the top. The microphone on the right on the top is for the lady. 
and the microphone below is for a gent for the brothers here here there's a microphone left below for the brothers ladies or brothers on the top ladies okay fine the microphone on the rear part on the top part is for the ladies and the microphone in the front part is for the gents i request that the sisters can line up on the microphone behind on my right and on my left and the brothers can line up on the microphone that is in the front on the right and on the left we request that if there are any non-muslims they should be given the first opportunity if there are any non-muslim and if they have any questions they are most welcome to ask any questions on the topic even outside the topic the non-muslims are our guest of honors today so they can ask any questions on the topic as well as out of the topic any questions on islam and comparative religion any questions on islam on christianity on hinduism on judaism on the topic they're most welcome normally after religious talk you don't have open question answer session i normally prefer giving more time for the question answer session than the talk if there are any non-muslim brothers and sisters would like to ask a question please line up behind the queue for the sister that's on the top behind on my right and left for the brothers it's down on the right and the left i request that any non-muslim who have any questions they can please come forward to the microphone they need not wait in the queue please pose your please pose your question please keep it brief it should be two or three sentences anything more than that it's a short lecture please mention your name and your profession so that i will be in a better position to reply can we have the first question from the brother here yes brother your name and your profession uh, my name is shobit jain sorry shobit shobit yeah uh, my question is uh, i am believing the ultimate power in the ultimate power so is it mandatory to uh, to give the name either uh, i i will say that uh, it will be a god it will be allah it will be a bhagwan to so ask the question that he believes in the ultimate power but does he have to give it a name like allah god or bhagwan as long as you believe in the ultimate power the quran says in surah isra chapter number 17 verse number 110 The Quran says, "Kulli dulla abidur Rahman ayam atadu falla Allah small usna." Say, "Call upon Him by Allah or by Rahman, by whichever name you call upon Him. To Him belongs the most beautiful name. Whatever name you give to the ultimate power, it should be a beautiful name, and it should not conjure up a mental picture. If you give it a name and you degrade it, then we object. If you give it a name and you degrade it, for example, someone who can rest." someone who can lie someone who makes a human be uh, someone who makes a mistake someone who can die so if you give certain name and certain qualities to god which degrade it then we take objection otherwise you can call god by any name but it should be a beautiful name it should not conjure up a mental picture and it should be a name given by almighty god like that there are 99 attributes given to almighty god in the quran ar rahman Ar Rahim, Al Hakim, Most Gracious, Most Merciful, Most Wise, and the crowning one is Allah. So it is not required that you should give one particular name, but you cannot degrade it by giving it a wrong name. That is very important. And you say ultimate power. That's a name. I believe in ultimate power. Now ultimate power is a name. Correct, right or wrong? Uh, right. So you say ultimate power. Someone says Allah. Someone says God. Whatever you say, that definition of that ultimate power, or that God, or Allah, should not match that of the human beings. You understand? It should be one. It should not be two. Yeah. Allah has summed. It should be absolutely eternal. It should not be like Rajnish, which has diabetes mellitus. Correct? Asthma, chronic backache. Huh? he should not be get nor should be begotten and there should be nothing like him that ultimate power cannot be two it should be one it should so whether you call ultimate power whether you call allah whether you call god it should not conjure up a mental picture and should not go away from the true definition of that entity
Hope that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I have one another, another question. Sure. Uh, to start to read Quran, it is mandatory. Uh, how much it important that uh, to believe in either God is exist or not? How much is important to start uh, to read? Brother asked the question, what is mandatory to start reading the Quran? Nothing is mandatory. To read the Quran, you should have a desire to read the Quran. It is not compulsory to read the Quran, you should believe in God and then read the Quran. If you don't believe in God, also you read. Inshallah, you will start believing. So, for reading Quran, there is nothing mandatory. Only thing, you should have a desire to read. You, you, and when you read, your heart opens up. So that is the beauty of the Quran. The beauty of the Quran, there's nothing mandatory. Not that you should have a beard, not that you should wear a cap, nothing mandatory. You, only thing you should have a desire to read. And when you read, then your heart opens up and you realize the truth. If you believe in it, then you accept it. If the Quran, what I'm talking about, all this thing I gave in the lecture. If you start believing, you accept it. But before reading, you don't have to accept anything. Once you accept it, then you agree with it. Once you agree, then you follow the guidance. Because once what you start believing, then you start following. If you believe in what you read, you believe in mathematics 2 plus 3 is equal to 4, then you agree with it, then you start believing in it, and then you practice it. The same thing in the Quran, when you read the Quran, it opens up the mind. And you come to know the truth, and the reality, unlike any other book, which is more of a storybook fashion written by human beings. So that is the beauty of the Quran. It is the most positive book in the world. It is a proclamation for humanity. It is a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It is a warning to the heedless. It's a guide to the erring. It's an assurance to those in doubt. It's a solace to the suffering and a hope to those in despair. This is the beauty of the Quran. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh... I asked to ma many people this question, but right now I got the correct answer. There is no foundation. Thank the you. People Thank you so will much. tell you, you should be in wudu, you should be in this. That is afterwards. That is once you start respecting, you start doing other things. There is no requirement as long as you read and you come to the true path because the Quran is a book of guidance to humanity. Okay. Have you read the Quran, brother? Have you read the Quran? Uh, something, sometimes. Partly. Yep. Brother, do you believe that there is one God? Yeah, I what believe. What you call it is different. But yeah. you believe there is one God? I believe in a one God. Brother, do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? <laughs> Not till now. Not till now. Yeah. And I believe you are coming from a Hindu background. Uh, yeah, sometimes. Means, <laughs> you can say. Because uh, I believe in Hinduism also, Buddhism also. I read the many things from many different, different religions. So, that's the thing only. If you read the Hindu scriptures, it is mentioned in the Hindu scripture, in more than 100 places, the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. More than 100 places. If you read Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Ganda 3, Adeta 3, Shloka number 5 to 8, it talks about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you read Bhavishya Purana, Parvatri, Khanda Tri, Adhyata Tri, Shloka number 27, it talks about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you read the Kunta Sukta, Atharva Ved, book number 20, and if you read book number 20, Atharva Ved, hymn number 127, Shlok number 1 to 14, it talks about Narashansa, it talks about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There are more than 100 places in the Hindu scriptures, it talks about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I'll just give you a detail of one. If you read the Kalki Purana, Kalki Purana, which is mentioned in, in Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, verse number 5, verse number 7, verse number 11, verse number 15, it says that there is a Kalki avatar to come, whose father's name will be Vishnu Yas. Vishnu means God, Yas means servant, Vishnu Yasmi, servant of God. In Arabic, it is Abdullah, which was the name of the father of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says he will, born, he will be born to a woman in the womb of Sumati. Sumati means serenity and peace. In Arabic, it's Amina, which was the name of the mother of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
It says he will be born in a village by the name of Sambala, peace, that is Makkah. He will be born in the house of the chief of the village of Sambala, chief of Makkah, which is the Quraysh family, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born from the Quraysh family. It says he will get the first revelation in a cave, which we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got in Gara He will, he, when he gets the revelation, he'll get at night time, and we know that it's mentioned in the Quran. Furthermore, it says that he will migrate northwards and come back. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated northwards to Medina and came back. It says he'll have four companions, that's the fourth for Khulfa Rashidin. There are minute details mentioned about the last and final messenger, that is Kalki Otar in the Hindu scriptures. So if you read the Hindu scriptures, any, almost the scripture of all the major world religions, whether it be Buddhist scripture, whether it be Old Testament, whether it be New Testament, whether it be the Hindu scripture, whether it be the Parsi scripture, all these scriptures, even though they have been changed, Yet, there is mention of one God in all these scriptures, also mention of the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. My request to you, brother, is that you read and do research on this, and I pray to Almighty God that may you open your heart and may he guide you. Definitely, I will do it. Thank you, Armand. Thank you. Are there any questions from the sister's side? Any sisters? Yes. Any non-Muslim sister? A non-Muslim sister? Assalamu uh, alaikum, brother Zakir. Uh, what I prefer that... Uh, sister, are you a non-Muslim? I am a Muslim, but sister, what if I wait. go to be a non-Muslim then? Sorry? I am a Muslim, but what Masha. if I go to be a non-Muslim When you then? go to be a non-Muslim, then you can come in front of the queue. Now, if you are a Muslim, as per the rules, we give first chance to a person who is a non-Muslim. After the non-Muslim finish, We'll give the Muslim an opportunity. There is the, no non-Muslim in this queue. Not your queue. Inshallah, we'll see the other queue. Sister, are there non-Muslims on the top? Yeah. Yes. yes, sister, most welcome. Can I have your name and your profession and a question, sister? All right, so my name is Rose and I work for Qatar Airways. My question is, I've heard you talk about religion so much and I'll speak of the Bible because that's what I'm aware of. You say, you talk of Jesus as religious leader. But as far as I'm concerned, Jesus did not come to introduce any religion. Neither is he a religion, religious leader. What Jesus introduced in this world was the kingdom of God. The second question, maybe you can elaborate, uh, which religion is God? Because as far as I do research, I've come to understand that Jesus, who is my Lord and my Savior, he did not introduce any of those. He introduced the government of heaven. In other words, he wanted to colonize the world like, with heavenly power. There's a lot of controversies. The other question is... Sister, please pose one question at a time. I already posted two questions. After the answer, you can ask the next question. Okay. One question at a time. The sister asked two questions, and I believe the sister is a Christian. She said that I said Jesus was a religious leader. I never said that. I never ever said Jesus, peace be upon him, was a religious leader. I said he was a messenger of God. There's a world of a difference between messenger of God and religious leader. A messenger of God is far superior. You have many religious leaders in the world today. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. And you said in your question that he is your Lord and your Savior. Yes. First, let me tell you, sister. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was one of the mightiest messengers of Almighty God. We believe that he was the Messiah, which is translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously, without any male intervention, which many modern-day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Muslims and the Christians, we are going together. But one may ask, then where is the parting of faith? The parting of faith is 
that most of the Christians believe, including yourself, that we come to know from a question, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity. And most of the Christians believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God. Let me remind you, sister. I am a student of comparative religion. I have read the Bible. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. If, sister, you can point out a single unequivocal statement from anywhere in the Bible, a single unambiguous statement from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me, I, Zakir Naik, am ready to accept Christianity today. I have heard you, sir, saying that. I am not times. speaking on behalf of the other Muslims. I am ready to put my head on the guillotine. There yes. is not a single unequivocal statement. Hear my question clearly. <laughs> Hear my challenge clearly, sister. There is not a single unambiguous statement, not a single unequivocal statement, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says, worship me. Yes, sister. I have an answer to that, sir. Yes, in the book of John, the Bible says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh. What I want you to wait, know wait, is wait, that... Wait, 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 sister. That does not fulfill my challenge at all. You, you name the book, I will give you reference. You are quoting from Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one. And the Word became flesh is verse number 11, 12, 13. You are quoting only the book. I am giving you chapter number, verse number. I answer but, me. Wait, wait, the I'm, word became God. But what does that full, say? Sister, were these the words spoken by Jesus, peace be upon him? And the answer is no. What is my challenge? Not a single unequivocal statement. Not a single unambiguous statement. From anywhere in the Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says. Himself says means that should be in red letter. There is something called as red letter Bible. If you are a Christian, you may be aware of it. Red letter means Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself said. Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 1 to 13 is not in red. I'll answer it. Wait here, let her answer it. First of all, you have not fulfilled my challenge. It should be Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself says. These are not the words of Jesus. It is the word of a Jew by the name of Philo. Correct? It's the word of a Jew by the name of Philo. And Sorry. never ever did he claim divinity for this. Yet, I will help you. What does it say? In the big, anyway, your quotation wasn't correct. I will give you the verbatim quotation. Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one says, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. And later on it says the word became flesh. If you agree that the word is God, and if you change word is to God, in the beginning was word becomes in the beginning was God, and God was with God, do you mean to say there were two gods? No, because let, the word let of me God, complete. sir. Let me complete. You pose the question. You pose the question, I'm taking You don't a allow people to give answers. You, are, you pose the question, I'm giving the answer. After I finish the answer, you can speak. You can't interrupt. Did I interrupt you when you were speaking? Did I interrupt? Yes or no? Now no. when I'm giving the answer, why are you interrupting? Let me finish the answer, then you can answer. Point number one, you didn't fulfill my challenge. It is not the word of Jesus. Your whole argument goes out. Yet I'm answering. You did not tell, you should say, sorry, Dr. Zakir, it is not the word of Jesus. Did you say that? No. You are not honest. Tell to the Tell to the audience, these are not the words of Jesus, peace be upon him. Am I right or no? You don't know. See, you are quoting and you don't know. I am a student of comparative religion. These words are not spoken by Jesus, peace be upon him. Yet I am answering. If you say the word is God, and if you substitute words with God, it means in the beginning was the word, becomes in the beginning was God. God was with God. Was there two gods? And the answer is no. I'll give you a third answer. If you read the original manuscript, the first time the word God is used, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. It is hothios. Hothios in Greek and Aramaic means the God. The second time the God is used, it is tonthios. 
Hotios means the God, Almighty God. Tontios means godly person. But unfortunately, in the translation, they are taking you for a ride. You go to the original manuscript of Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one. The first time the word God is used, it is Hotios, meaning the God. Second time it is used, it tontheos means a godly person. So it reads, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the God. And the word was a godly person, meaning a messenger of God. Mister, do you understand? No. This is called, you don't understand English. I'm you tell me what English, I said is wrong. I'm quoting your scholars. I am quoting your Bible. You pick up any Bible of red letter Bible. These words are not in that point number one. You go to the Greek and Arabic. Do you know Greek, sister? Do you know Greek and Aramaic? Was the Bible revealed in English? Was the Bible revealed in English, sister? Yeah, um, it was Greek. Greek and Aramaic. So the original word is Hothios. Do you know what is the meaning of Hothios? Go home and Google. Hothios. Maybe I'm pulling a fast one. All right, one. sir. All wait, right, wait, sir. Wait, wait, wait. Hothios it means the God. Tontheos means a God, godly person. That means even if I agree, it says Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. Do you believe in that? No. He's, bi he's bigger than messenger. He's not just a messenger. It's an sister, insult to sister, call my Lord sister, a messenger. Sister, sister, I ask We you will what, do something to prove something, sir. But first say that what you quoted is wrong. You agree it is wrong, then we go to the next question. I don't agree. That means what you said is it's not word of Jesus. That means you're fooling the people, right or wrong? Did you... you you thought I did not know, correct? No, I'm, I'm not here to demonstrate knowledge, sir. I'm it here is not to the demonstrate question of knowledge. It is the question of Bible. You believe Bible is the word of God, correct? Yes, I do. I don't believe it is the word of God. Even though you believe the Bible is the word of God, I know Bible more than you, right? There is one thing to know the Bible. There is another thing to have the revelation of the Bible. Because you know, even when Jesus came, the people who did not understand who he was were religious leaders. They missed big time. Sister, they did not know who he was because sister, he was hidden. And the work of the New Testament. One place in the Bible where the un un unambiguous statement, unequivocal statement, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself, says, I am God, or where he says, Worship me. I am ready to accept Christianity. Simple challenge. And you can't show one verse from this big Can I ask of you a question, sir? Can you separate yourself from your word? Sorry? Can you separate Dr. Zaka and Nike from his word? Can you separate Dr. Can you separate Zaka yourself from your word? But what difference does it make whether I can or whether I cannot? You see? You don't get it. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. But well, religious mind is too big for five senses. Jesus is the word of God and himself he is God. The Bible every, says he gave him the name that is above every other name, every, which is the word of God. Every messenger gets the word of God. Moses was the word of God. Jesus was the word of God. Abraham was the word of God. Prophet Muhammad is the word of God. Question. So what is the problem? Which of every the messenger, messenger did what Jesus at his time did? is the word of God. What is so different about Jesus, peace be upon him? You the cannot difference. point out a single statement from your Bible where Jesus said, I'm God, or he says, worship me. I have, and now I you're have quoting... an answer for that, sir. Since the, the beginning of the word of, of the Bible, till the time of Jesus, tell me any of the messenger you call who was capable to cast out devils, to heal the sick. Why? Because in the beginning, it was only God who had power to deal with the devil from the fall of, the, from, of man in the Garden of Eden. But sister, these things were hidden for salvation sister, of men. If a person takes out devils from a person, does he become God? Today there are many people who do Rukia yes, and they take I out do devils. The same they don't become I've God. Been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Today, sister, there are many human beings, even in Qatar, you have who can do Rukia and can take out devils from the human being. Because that does they, not make them God. Does they, it make they, them God? They got that power from Jesus. I cast out devils myself. Oh, in so the you're... name of Jesus. Oh, so you also become God now? No, I, I have been translated because of my faith in Jesus. The I Bible agree says, with you. You, listen. you, Jesus Christ, peace be upon you. If you read the Bible, in the gospel, when he gives life to the dead Lazarus, he prays to Almighty God 
every miracle Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did, he did in the name of God. He didn't do on his own. If Same you would thing give the Bible time, says. I will explain to all these congregations what is all about Jesus. Sorry, we don't have the time. You can hire the hall and tomorrow give a lecture. This is a question and answer time. You do not answer time. me. Okay, can we have the next question? Yes, brother, your name and your profession. Yeah, my name is Jitendra. I'm a software engineer. I have a question. Uh, like you said, all religion scriptures are uh, giving same message that there are only one God. Then why we need to be convert in a other religion? We can't uh, understand our own religion and follow this thing. Why need to be convert? Brothers asked a very good question. Brothers asked a very intelligent question that if all the religions speak about one God, then why do you have to convert? Yeah. If all religions because are the Allah same. Because converting from Christianity to Hinduism. Very good question. To Christianity that's, or Islam. that's what the Quran says. Quran says in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 19, in the Dina in the Lail Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of our Almighty God is to submit your will to God. There, God Almighty sent only one religion. All the messengers preached only one religion. But when they preached the religion, the human beings kept on changing it. The moment the scriptures got corrupted, Almighty God sent a new messenger and a new religion. All messengers taught the same thing. There is one God, don't do idol worship, believe in him. As it kept on changing, then Almighty God sent the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. All the messengers from Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, all taught the same thing. Then Almighty God says in the Quran, in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 9, we have revealed the Quran and we shall guard it from corruption. Now Almighty God takes it upon himself that this last and final revelation, the Quran, no one can change. Even if you want, you cannot change it. All the previous revelation, <coughs> By the passage of time, we human beings changed it. It was forgotten, it got changed, it got interpolated. Now when the last and final version, last and final revelation, if there's something like the Old Testament and New Testament, this glorious Quran is the last testament. This last testament, Almighty God says, He will protect it. Now what I'm trying to do, brother, I'm not trying to get division. What I am giving a very simple formula, which will not hurt everyone, which will not hurt anyone. The other people, when they talk, there is friction between religion. I believe in saying, Ta'ala wila kalimatin sawa im baina baina kum. Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 64. Come to common terms as been asking you. Which is the first term, Allah na puta illallah. That is worship than what Allah. What I tell all the followers of religion, at least believe that one book, 100% is the word of God. So Hindu would not mind saying, I believe Veda is the word of God. The Christian would not mind saying, I believe that the Bible is the word of God. The Muslim will not mind saying, I do not mind believing that Quran is the word of God. What I give a simple formula, let us agree to follow what is common in all three. You know, Christian, Islam, Hinduism, these three are the largest religions of the world. All three put together is more than 50% of the world population, correct? Yes. More than 50, two-thirds of the world population. Two-thirds of the world population are Christian, Hindu, and Muslim. Yeah. Now, I tell, let us agree to follow what is common. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. What is not matching, we'll discuss tomorrow. Let us agree to follow what is common. Now, if a particular thing is common, is same in the Quran, in the Bible, and the Veda, would you mind following it? Yeah. So would you mind following it? If it's there in the Veda, would you mind following it? You wouldn't mind following it, correct? Yeah. Because you're a Hindu, correct? Same thing, the Christian wouldn't mind following what is mentioned in the Bible. What I'm doing, let us agree to follow what is coming. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. So my son gave a talk on similarities between Islam and Christianity. It was more than one hour talk. Yeah. I've given a talk on similarity between Islam and Hinduism. Let us agree to follow what is common. Now, when you do a comparative no, study, uh, we come. Uh, sorry? sorry to interrupt you. I am agreeing this thing that uh, this there is the only one God, and we have to believe on that. Whether sorry? What, uh, I am agree that uh, concept that there is the only one God. Very good. Uh -huh. Whether it's uh, you said uh, uh, the father of Jesus, you are calling 
somewhere I, uh, here or uh, he the Allah or he the permission of our Brahma. What do you call? Who is the same one only? Only the name are different. Wait, wait, wait. Let me finish now. This is your saying with your mind. Yeah, should I follow your mind or should I follow the Veda? Hmm? Should I follow what is in your mind or should I follow what is in Veda? Uh, in what in Veda you are saying? Correct. So let me. What you are talking is half correct, half wrong. Uh, yeah, what I don't know saying? about religion. Other things. So therefore, details. you hear Quran says, "First, alu al zikri in kum tulatala moon." Ask the person who's an expert. I'm a student of comparative religion. I'm giving you references. Just because that lady behind saying Jesus is God, will you believe Jesus is God? No, I don't want to give any reference. No, I no. Just... Does the Veda say Jesus is God? Huh? Does the Veda say Jesus is God? Does the Veda say Jesus is God? No. No. Does the Quran say no? Even the Bible does not say. So why am I supposed to follow that lady? She wants to give a speech here. She quoted one reference that was so wrong. She wants to preach without references. So let us follow the scripture. Now, when you do a comparative study of the Bible and the Veda and the Quran, we come to know there is one God. That, uh, that God has got no images, no statues. Mentioned in the Quran, mentioned in the Bible, mentioned in Hindu scripture. If you read in the Hindu scripture, Swetha Sethar Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19, it says, Na tasya pratima asti. It's a Sanskrit quotation which says, Of that God, there is no pratima. Pratima in Sanskrit means a photograph, a picture, a painting, a portrait, a statue, a sculpture. Na tasya pratima asti. Of that God, there is no pratima, there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no picture, there is no painting, there is no statue, there is no sculpture. Hinduism says that, Hindu scripture. Quran says that, Bible says that. Let us agree to follow one God who has got no image, who has got no idol, who has got no scripture. No scripture. It says that God does not have any, does not beget anyone. The Hindu scripture says, Veda says that, Quran says that, same thing mentioned in the Bible. Let us agree. So what we, when we do a comparative study, we come to know Almighty God is one, has got no images, has got no portrait, does not have any children, does not have any parents. Let us agree to follow that. Second thing we come to know, that all the scriptures say that there is a final messenger to come, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Just before you, I gave the answer to the brother. You heard the answer? It's mentioned in the Hindu scripture about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Same thing is mentioned in the Bible. If you are my son, he gave references from the Bible, right? From the Old Testament. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 12, verse number 29. In the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. About Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's also prophesied in the New Testament. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse 26. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. He's talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So why don't the Christians believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Why don't the Hindus believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Now you tell me, it is mentioned in your scripture. The details about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that his father's name is Abdullah, his mother's name is Sumati. He will get the revelation in the cave at night time. He will have four companions. He'll migrate northwards and come back. All these details. Do you believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, brother? I can't say because I don't read these things. So who's to blame? I'm giving you reference, correct? Yeah, you are giving a reference. So then that means you have to go and check today. Yeah. And once you check today, if it's there, will you believe? I can't say because I am very... Huh? Can't say? <laughs> you believe is that the word of God. Now your word of God is saying last and uh, final. Uh, in that case, I can say simple, I am believing in one God. Uh, so call... one God is half. Uh -huh. No, no. It's not God... full. No, only one God is one God part. Is, no, one God is one only, so Allah, or you can say Om, or you can par Brahma, whatever. Uh, whatever, Muhammad don't give it wrong name. Don't give it image. Anything you cannot say to God. It's not image. It's not, par Brahma is not image. You Sorry? Can't, if you call par Brahma, you Brahma. can't say any, uh -huh, par Brahma. How is, is Brahma? Brahma means you don't imagine, which is the thing. Okay, how does Brahma look? Have you seen photograph of Brahma? No, nothing. Not because I've seen photograph of Brahma. Not Brahma. Par Brahma means Brahma means is Brahman. By Brahma means Brahma. Par Brahma means Par Brahma. It carries Brahma, the creator of this world. We do, we don't we can't imagine this power. We can't imagine these things. How and uh, how he is looking. 
so we can't imagine his face and other things his power even you can't imagine so how you can imagine face and other things so that allah or omkar you say that uh, in, uh, i don't know much but omkar means is a ek single one half only. what you are saying is right half what you are saying is wrong because okay. today Aha, today then is talking about brother, the muhammad no, brother today first me then today I, when you ask any muslim what is the image of allah he will not say anything but when you ask a hindu what is the image of brahma he will tell you Brahma has got four heads on each side ah, of the crown. Brahma and Par Brahma, do both are different. That things, no? Brahm, if you have Brahma, you cannot have Par Brahma. I am not talking about Brahma. Is the you cannot God have Par Brahma. Brahma. You cannot have Par Brahma. Why? Par Brahma. Par Brahma, you cannot have because it is an superlative. You cannot have superlative for God. You understand? Brahma, Par Brahma means superior to Brahma. Correct? Par Brahma means the pare means which you can't think about your imagination. I know it, brother. Yeah. All these words, so many of know. these words are wrong. Some words are correct. Therefore, don't use a wrong terminology for God. Your knowledge is limited. Correct? My That's the limited. reason. If your knowledge is limited, sometimes you give a name to Almighty God and make an image of that, like Vishnu. They make an image. The attribute is good. Attribute is good, sustainer. We agree with it, but yeah. giving an image, we disagree with it. That's the reason. What you have to realize, you cannot go against the concept of the pure definition of God. That God has got no image. Correct? Yeah. Coming to the second part, you said you have not done research. I am asking you go and do research. I am giving you references now. Okay. I give you so many references. You have heard the references? Yeah. Or you go to my site, Zakir Naik. Mm -hmm. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Hindu scriptures. All the references are there. You check it up. It's it's available in my library. You know, I have a library of Hindu books and Christian books in Dongri in Bombay. It's all there. You go on the net. It's very clearly mentioned that the last and final messenger, the last and final avatar, the Kalki avatar is no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Uh, then he's a messenger like a saint, right? Sorry. Uh, he's a son, a saint. Uh, Sant, you can say. No, Sant, Autar, Kalki Autar. Autar has Autar. got two meanings. One meaning of Autar, what people think, is Almighty God coming in bodily form, which is wrong. That is the definition in the Oxford Dictionary. Au, coming from Tra, means God sending someone. So if you say that God is sending someone, meaning a messenger, we agree with it. And the last and final Autar is the Kalki Autar. So my request to you is, that besides believing in one God, besides agreeing he has got no idols, you also have to believe in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I have given a talk on similarity between Islam and Hinduism. It further mentioned in the Hindu scripture that you should not have alcohol, that you should not gamble. It's mentioned that the women should wear hijab. They should draw the head covering over the, over the head, over the bosom. All this is mentioned that you should not gamble. Same thing mentioned in the Quran, should not have alcohol, should not gamble. It's mentioned that you should do hijab. So you hear my talk on similarities between Islam and Hinduism, and let us agree to follow what is common. We will. Problem is, you talk about unity, but you don't want to follow. Who's to blame? You take me anything in the Quran which matches with your Veda, I will follow. Anything in the Quran. Give reference number, chapter number, verse number. Doctor Zakir Naik will follow. Marat ka bacha. Right or wrong? I'm challenging you, anything you open your Quran with the translation, Dr. Zakir Naik, your Quran chapter number 5, verse number so and so, I will follow. I will not say, I will see, I will check, immediately I will follow. I know, you are a, obviously a scholar, I am not, not a I'm scholar. I'm not a scholar, I'm a student. Okay, I'm you a, are student. a student. But even I'm not a student. Even I started to learn about this thing. So become a but student. When will, you be, when will you? No, I have just a simple question asked when all the scriptures are saying same See, thing. See, when why the haq is there, there, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. Will you say I'll check up and then believe? 2 plus 2 is how much, brother? 2 plus 2 is how much? 2 plus 2 is how much? 4 only. 4. <laughs> Do you believe in that? Yeah. Or will you say I'll check up now? No. At the main basis of life, your creator, you want to check up. And 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, you believe. This is the problem with us human beings. Our creator is there. Once you know, you should accept. No, what will my father say? What will my mother say? What will my neighbor say? What will my wife say? We think 20 things. If your father says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, will you believe? 
No. But your father says, oh, don't read the Quran, then you don't read. No, no, I'm not saying to reading any books, uh, Mr. Quran or Holy, Holy Scriptures, all can read and they can believe. But there's no need to conversion from one to the other. If, if I'm conversion... You don't have to convert, you have to revert. There's nothing like convert. Convert means you go from one track to the other track. It's mentioned by the beloved prophet. Every child was born in Deen al fitr Deen al fitr means accepting the God's commandment. When, when you grow up, you start doing idol worship, you start doing fire worship, so you become a non-Muslim. So when you come back to Islam, the right word is revert, it's not convert. What okay. is it? Revert Re you're coming back to the original faith. No one is asking you to convert. And there's only one religion, religion of God. The religion yeah. Islam is submitting your will to God. I'm not telling you to go against God. <coughs> That's submitting your will to God in Arabic is called as Muslim. In English it is called as submitting your will to God. Give it any name, no problem. At least submit. We are afraid to submit. Now that lady was taught by the church something wrong. She's believing. What can I do? Oh, Blind belief. Yeah, then beliefs is one part. They are believing uh, our beliefs. Believing in wrong things. I'm giving with reference what I'm trying to tell you. Follow your scripture. Follow your scripture. Even though your scriptures have been distorted, at least let us follow what is common. Right or wrong? Yeah, common so, we follow, we follow beliefs, we do practice. So now will you go home and check about the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad in the Hindu scripture today? Uh, no. <laughs> you will not check up today? I will try, I will not, I can't say anything. What is the use? I can't commit. <laughs> what is the use? That means you are not Marth <laughs> What is the use? What is you are the use? talking, uh, you are talking about uh, people should come to comment. No, it's not Why should we that. fight? I am telling don't fight, at least follow your scripture, you don't want to follow. Okay, I will You are educated, you are a graduate, correct? Huh? Yeah. You are a, how much time you spend in, in or studying all these subjects? I am telling you, go two hours on the internet, you don't want to go. Who's to blame, you or me? You okay. tell me anything in the Quran, I will go and find out today. Ask. Or not today, now, just now. Tell me. I don't know about Quran, how can I ask? Because I want to follow the Quran. Okay, so suppose I am a, as a Hindu, I am practicing as a Hindu good, uh, as a good, uh, means You are not practicing as a good Hindu, I am a good ha, Hindu. I am not, I am not practicing. I am a good Hindu. No. no, Hindu means what? Hindu means coming from the Indus Valley, India. I am come from India. Okay. You live in Qatar. Okay. If you live in Qatar, you can't be a Hindu. You live in Qatar, no? No, I am also came from there only. <laughs> no, where do you live but now? Huh? Where right do you live now? now? I am living here. For ah, so now you are not a Hindu. Okay, whatever, whatever. Because Hindu means living in India. I live in India. Okay. I am coming here as a tourist. to give lecture, correct? Yeah. So Hindu by definition means a person who lives in the land of Indus Valley civilization. Okay. So by definition I am a Hindu. This word was bought by the Arabs. Okay. Bought by the Arabs. Therefore when I go to Saudi they call me Hindi, Hindi. Hindi. <laughs> If I follow Sanatana, Dharma, what did they mention? Ah, that is what was said by Swami Vivekananda. Hinduism is a misnomer. The right okay. word should be Vedanta, should be Sanatana Dharma. Sanatan Dharma. But you're not following Sanatana Dharma also. Okay, I'm not yes, following. Sir. But what I'm saying, if I follow the Sanatana Dharma in proper way, then at the time of if last... If you follow properly, you'll believe in one God, you believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you won't have alcohol, you won't have pork, and all the ladies will start doing hijab. You and I will be one. Name no problem, correct? If you follow the Veda, if you follow Sanatana correctly, you and I would be one. Right or wrong? Yeah. But you don't want to go home and do research. What to do? Hmm? You don't want to go home and do research. No, I will do. I will go home and research. That is Inshallah. A... When you will do? Today? Tonight? Yeah, not today, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow Inshallah. Yeah. I am here for a week. Huh? I am here for one week in Qatar. <laughs> yeah. Do research and we will meet again, Inshallah. Okay? Okay. Thank you, brother. Can we have the next question? <laughs> Are there okay. any questions? I believe there are two microphones on the beach there down. Are there any questions? I already said it. If there are any... If there are any microphones on the beach... Hello, sir. Before you are getting the microphone ready, we request that there is a lady here. Try to ask the question. Yes, sister, most welcome.
Sir, this is Guhan. Yeah. Good evening, sir. My name is Carolina and I am a nurse. I study a lot differences between Islam and Christianity. And I have, I have lots of questions, but the main question I have at the moment, you said that Islam accept Jesus as a messenger of God. And uh, Jesus, when was asked about divorce, if the man can divorce a woman, he said that Moses gave, us, gave the permission to divorce a woman only because of the hardness of the heart of the people. But Jesus said that a man cannot divorce a woman. A man should leave the father and the mother and join the woman and they became one, one spirit in two bodies. So this for me is difference between what we believe, what I believe as a Christian and what you believe as a Muslim people. Just to ask the question, she says there are many differences. What she's quoting is a verse from the Bible from Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse yes. number 27 and 28. That's correct. And, and I'm giving you the quotation. What you said, sister, is in your own words, which is not verbatim. Yeah, what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's in red letter. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 27, verse number 28, it has said of the old times yeah. that thou shalt give a bill of divorce. But I say unto you, whosoever looketh upon a woman, that it was an old time that thou shalt give a bill of divorce. But I say unto you that that whosoever looks at a woman to lust after has already committed adultery in his heart. There are two verses that thou shalt give a bill of divorce. But I say unto you that whoever whoever sleepeth with another woman shall give divorce. That means of the old law, sister, at the time of Moses, it was said that if you want to give divorce, give a bill of divorce. That's it. But Jesus Christ, please be upon him, says that you shall not give bill of divorce until your wife sleep with somebody else. That means previously, at the time of Moses, divorce was allowed. To give a divorce, you give a bill of divorce. Now Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, a messenger of God, comes and changes the law. And he says that thou shall not give a bill of divorce unless, unless your wife sleep with somebody else. So there is a change. In Islam, it is different. In Islam, sister, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that amongst the permissible things which is the most hateful in the sight of God is divorce. Permissible, but the most hateful. That means in Islam, you can give divorce when required, when both husband and wife are not compatible. It does not mean that if the wife is bad, then you can give divorce, or if the husband is bad, then only can you give divorce. Maybe both are good, but they are not compatible. And we have many such examples. They were companions of the Prophet, male companions and female companions. We have the example of uh, Zayd, may Allah be pleased with him. Along with another companion, a lady companion, Zainab, may Allah be pleased with her. They were married, they both were good, they were not compatible. You can divorce or can be one is not good wife is not good husband can divorce husband is, is not good the wife can take divorce can give kula so in Islam it is not like the times of Moses give a bill of divorce khalas, easy or at the time of Jesus peace be upon him you cannot give divorce until your wife does fornication in Islam we have to weigh the pros and cons and based on that Or based on that, so Islam, the last and final messenger came and said, divorce is permissible, but as a last resort. And how to give divorce? The details are given. So that is the difference between the teachings of Moses, the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hope that throws some light on the differences. Okay, thank you. So do you agree with me that marriage in Christianity and marriage in Islam is different? There are different rules? Yes, there are different rules. There are different rules. But which rule is better, sister? I I'm asking you a question. In, 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 in the time of Moses, anyone can get divorced. Khalas, good, bad, ugly. In, in Christianity, only if your wife is caught fornicating, you can give. In Islam, if you're incompatible, you can give. 
If they are not good, you can give. Not just like that. It is permissible, but the most hateful in the sight of Allah. Which would you prefer, sister? I prefer my religion and be with one man until the end of my life. Okay, if the husband comes and hits you every day, he drinks alcohol, hits you every day, blue and black, your eyes turn black every day, would you like to stay with him? We can be separated, but we cannot get married again. That's different. Well, I'm asking you a question. Wouldn't you like to find some other life partner? <laughs> we are not allowed. If you made a mistake. No, you are not. I'm not asking whether you're allowed or not. Which is preferable for a human being? In Islam, if you make a mistake in choosing a wrong partner, I think I've got for my sister a very good person. I think he's very good. But after marriage, he hits her, he gambles, he drinks alcohol, black and blue. I would say separate. I'll give him chance, try reconciliation separate. She can marry in, she can marry in the woman. What was her fault? What was her fault, tell me? Why should my sister suffer? What type of religion is this? This is hard religion. To Not be, hard religion. This, Not my the religion is of hard. hard religion, which is a logical religion. And today, today, but natural, we have to have husband and wife. They have to be. Correct? Medically, you should get married. Otherwise, if you separate, what happens in America? You know what happens in America? In America, according to statistics, every person, man and woman, they have eight different sexual partners before they settle down with them. The statistics does not say how many they have after they get married. Eight! Some have five, some have ten, some have twenty. It is human nature. So now if you say you separate, what will you do? So that is the reason Islam prevents the woman from going on the wrong track or the man from going on the wrong track. Divorce, marry again. What is wrong? If you make a mistake... It's so easy. It's so easy. Sorry? It's so easy. It's easy? It's easy. Not easy, it's a test. You know, it's a test. for us what, it's a test for all life. Sister, what fault is it of yours if your husband, I mean your husband may be very good, I'm just giving a hypothetical example that if he does not treat you well, if he treats you, if he hits you black and white, and yet you want to be his wife, what is the logic? What time of religion is this? Isn't it illogical? This is the religion of love. Love? He's hitting you. What love? I promise him that I will be with him until the end but of his not, life. But you're not going to separate. You're not with him also. I can pray for him. I can pray, you can pray and even, ask God to can, change the heart of this pray, man. You can even pray after marrying someone else. You can't pray. But in I want religion. to pray for my husband. Oh, you can pray for your husband and your ex-husband also. In Islam, you can do that. We, pray, all, pray. we all pray for my dad and he changed after 30 years of being alhamdulillah, alcoholic. Alhamdulillah, he changed. Allah gave him a daya, correct? And my mom never gave up until he died. Very good. 30 years we all pray. Very good. And it wasn't easy. She, she might say, no, I want to marry somebody else. But do you mean to say, if you marry, you cannot pray for your ex-husband? Well, what kind of a religion is this? It's not a religion of love. In us, we can pray for a thousand people. Religion of love. I wish, I wish all Muslims pray for ex-wives and ex-husbands. Why, Why not? I wish. I have only one wife, mashallah. She's good. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. The most welcome. Are there any questions that are there on the beach? Any microphone on the beach? There are two microphones on the beach. Are there any non-Muslims who like to ask a question? Yes. From the microphone that is there on the beach. Yes. Hello, sir. Uh, this is Guhan. Actually, in the beginning of your lecture, you told like you will be clearing the answers for agnostics. Because uh, you just quoted that... Where is, the, where, is, where is the brother speaking from? I'm from outside. the beach. Okay, yeah. but what's your name? Guhan, Guhan. Sorry? Guhan, Guhan. Guhan. Yeah. Yes, brother Guhan. Uh, actually, in the beginning of your lecture, you told that you will be clearing the doubts of agnostics. Hmm. Uh, actually, uh, there was one person uh, 2,500 years before, uh, a man who lived, and he never opened his mouth whenever his disciples opened. I mean, whenever his disciples open a question of God. Uh, so can you please uh, convince how an agnostic should uh, see on God? Brother, ask the question. I said in my talk, I will convince an agnostic also. Yeah, it is the same I, thing, I just... brother. Ask the agnostic, 
who will tell you do you want to give me a lecture again one and a half hour no no as the agnostic who will be able to tell you the mechanism of object which no one has seen before the answer is the same even the agnostic will say creator agnostic means the person who is not clear yeah. and atheist means the person who doesn't believe in god even to the agnostic the method is the same i am killing two birds with one stone that agnostic will tell you creator ask him the creation of the universe how it came into existence about the shape of the earth about the light of the moon about the rotation again i can give the full lecture brother same thing this methodology will not only convince an atheist will even convince an agnostic brother hope that answers the question yeah that's okay i'll just go through the quran thank you can we have the next question are there any other questions from the beach from the microphone on the beach are there any question from the microphone on the beach Okay, at the time you're thinking, can we have the next question? Are there, are there non-Muslims here? Yes, brother, most welcome. Your name and yes. your profession. No, we'll go in circle, no problem. Good evening, sir. My name is Navin Kumar. I am from India. I am working in Qatar Fertilizers. Uh, actually, I was living here from three years. After coming here, I was, I know about, I was little bit know about Islam. Before that, I don't know anything. So from the colleagues, I learned this is the Islam like this religion. So I read the full Quran. Uh, I came to know that Allah sent messengers only males, but not send any females like this. Only the messengers are the males. But I think the Hindus, what we are following, maybe Ram, Krishna, all are messengers. And what about the goddesses, Durga, Parvati? What are all these things? So we are going in the wrong way, or we have to revert back. If we are revert back. Uh, why we are giving so many donations to the temples? Why these temples are there? What is the existence? We <clears throat> asked a question that in Islam, he came to Qatar, learned about Islam, and he knows there are many messengers in Islam, but there aren't any female messengers. In Hinduism, there are goddesses. Point number one, as I told you, in Hinduism, there's only one God. God. There are no goddesses in Islam. In Islam, the word Allah has got no gender yes. neither male neither female Allah is uncomparable but because in Arabic language by default we say kul hu Allah say he is Allah because in Arabic grammar when we use there are two types of gender male and female for female there are certain rules and regulation if it's feminine by nature like mother Ummun, by the sister, Uktun, it becomes female. Number two, if it ends with ta, like the watch, Saatun, it becomes female. There are rules and regulation. Or if it's in pairs, Ainun, eyes, Yadun, hands, it becomes feminine. All these do not match. So by default, we say Hua. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got no gender. In <coughs> Hinduism, there is God and goddesses. That is the reason God is not the appropriate word. Because you can play mischief with the, Arab, with the English word God. We prefer calling him Allah. Why? You cannot play mischief with the Arabic word Allah like you can do with the English word God. If you add S to God, it becomes God's plural of God. There is no plural of Allah. Kul wallah wad. If you add D-E-S-S -S to God, it becomes goddess, meaning a female god. There is no male Allah or female Allah in Islam. If you add father to God, it becomes godfather. There's nothing like Allah, father, Allah mean Islam. That is the reason we prefer calling Allah by the Arabic word Allah instead of the English word God. Do you understand? Yeah. In Hinduism, you have God, goddesses. Yeah. That is the reason it is not, we don't agree with it. Regarding messengers. There's a difference between God and difference between messenger. Yes. Don't merge up both. Yeah, I know. Ah, you're yeah, merging understand. here, then, then crack. So, first of all, in God, the Arabic word Allah is pure. All the other words can get manipulated. In terms of messengers, in Islam we believe that Almighty God <laughs> has only chosen men to be messengers. That does not mean females are inferior. There are mentions of four great females in the Quran and the Hadith. Talks about Maryam alayhi salam, 
Mother Mary, the Quran says in Surah Imran chapter number 3, verse number 43, Wa iskalatil malaikatu ya Maryamu, and behold the angel said, O oh Mary, inna Allah astafaki wa taharaki wa saki wa alamin, that Allah has chosen thee and purified thee, and purified thee above the women of all nations. That means Allah has purified her. It talks about the other great women. For example, Bibi Khatija. May Allah be pleased with her, who was the wife of the Prophet. It talks about Asya in Surah Tahrim, chapter number 66. Tahrim, who was the wife of Moses. No, sorry, who was the wife of uh, Firon. So the Quran talks about great ladies. But why did Allah not choose women to be messengers? There are many reasons. To say they were not pure, I've given you examples. Yes? 25 men are mentioned, even 4 women are mentioned. Correct? Now, why? Because the responsibility of messenger is very high. For the woman, Allah has upgraded her because she bears children. Now, if you have to bear children, then give the responsibility of taking care of the leader of the house difficult, taking care as the head of state difficult. So Allah didn't want to put on them additional burden. If you are the messenger, you have to lead the salah also. You have to lead the prayer. How can a woman lead the prayer? In Islam, a woman cannot lead a congregation of men. So because of various these reasons, Almighty God in His divine wisdom did not choose women to be messengers of Allah. He didn't want to overburden them. He gave them some facility. That's the reason He has kept only men as messengers. Hope that answers the question. Uh, if I'm having any doubts, so I, how can I get the correct answers? Can you give me any mail email so that I can mail to that? that if question? anything with comparative religion, you can write to me at islam at irf.net. Islam at irf.net. Or you can go to Islam Q&A. Islam Q&A is a good site which gives replies. Anything with comparative religion because we receive more than a thousand email a day. And believe me, it becomes difficult. We have more than 500 staff working full time, yet we cannot reply to all the emails. Okay. If it's comparative religion, that's a speciality, you can write to us. If it's general question, you can write to Islam Q&A. That's a very good website. Thank you. Can we have the next question? Yeah. as yeah. Alaikum, Doctor. We have a sister here. She wants to take Shahada, Alhamdulillah. Okay, sister. Uh, sister, may I know your name? Uh, my name is Gurpreet Kaur. I'm a Sikh. Uh, Sorry? I'm a Sikh. You are a, you are a Sikh. Sister, do you believe that there is one God? Yeah, I do believe. Do you believe that idol worship is wrong? Yeah. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yeah, I believe. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No, it's my free wish. So do you have a free will? Yeah. Is anyone bribing you, giving money? <laughs> no. Okay, so you're doing all of your own free will. Inshallah, I will say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God but Allah. There is no God but Allah. And Prophet Muhammad. And Prophet Muhammad. Is. Is. The messenger. The messenger. And servant of Allah. And. And servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. MashaAllah. May, may Allah grant you Jannah. You are a Muslim. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a non-Muslim becomes the Muslim, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that all his or her previous sins are washed away. Whatever good you did remains. Whatever sin you did, as many as they are, the moment you accept Islam, all your previous sins are washed away. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He, through you, guide the other people to the true religion. Thank you. Jazakallah, sister. Are there any non Muslims on the microphone on top? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Are there any non Muslims on the microphone on the top? Walaikum as salam. Inshallah, wait. Are there any non Muslims? Yes, I'm from. My, my name is Samuel. And I'm a Christian. Yes, Samuel, you're most welcome. You're speaking from the beach? Yes. Yes, Samuel, you're most welcome to ask your question. Yes, my question is uh, Do Muslims believe that Jesus is the Son of God? 
and also that they believe that uh, Jesus was a messenger, like just like uh, Moses, Elijah, and the rest. Uh, uh, also, is there a difference if going to heaven, do they go to heaven through Jesus or through Muhammad? Thank you. You will ask the question, Brother Samuel, do Muslims believe that Jesus is the son of God or do they believe he's a messenger like Moses and Samuel and others? And do they go to heaven through the teachings of Jesus or other people? Peace be upon him. Point number one, person who follows the teachings and commandments of Almighty God, then most verily we believe that Jesus was son of God. But if you mean no, he was the begotten son of God, then we don't believe in that. Because there's a verse in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16, which says that God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Now this verse, if you read the Revised Standard Version, revised by 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different corporate denominations, they say that this word begotten is an interpolation, is a fabrication, is a concoction, and they've thrown it out of the Bible. So this word begotten is an interpolation. So but naturally we Muslims do not believe that God can beget. So where is the question of Jesus being the begotten son of God? Son of God means godly person, we have got no problem. But we have not kept this attribute. What we believe, that Jesus, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. And they asked me the question, do you believe that a person can go to heaven with the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him? At the time of Moses, Moses' teachings took a person to heaven, peace be upon him. At the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, whatever Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, preached, what the teachings of Almighty God, if you follow Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you will go to heaven. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, also said in the Gospel of John, it's clearly mentioned in Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now, for he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that dear shall he speak, he shall glorify me. Here Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is saying that there is another messenger to come. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot understand them now. When he, when the spirit of truth shall come, talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he shall guide you to the truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that he shall he speak. Here Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, is prophesying of the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Today, if you want to go to heaven, you have to follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that is not only mentioned in the Quran, it's even mentioned in the Bible, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said <coughs> that I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. For he, when the messenger of God will come, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he will guide you all truth. So brother, at the time when Jesus Christ, peace be upon his alive, you have to follow his teachings. Today, you have to follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hope that answers the question, brother. Brother, yes. uh, do, you, do you believe there is one God? Yes, I believe there is one God. Do you believe Jesus is God or do you believe Jesus is messenger of God? I believe Jesus to be the son of God. No, fine. Son means a godly person, no problem. But do you believe that he is God himself? I believe he is the son of God, not on the same level as God. But very good. Not the same level, very good. Son of God means messenger of God, no problem. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Um, honestly, I have not read the Quran. Okay, so I, um, what I request I'm you... At a disadvantage. No, but my son gave a talk, brother, on similarities between Islam and Christianity. He gave so many references from the Bible. Did you hear it or not? I've heard it. So do you believe in it or not? Do you believe in the Bible? Yes, I do. So the Bible clearly mentions another messenger is going to come. His name is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So when the Bible says believe in Prophet Muhammad, why don't you believe? I believe that the Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as the messenger. No, if you read the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7, it says, that it is expedient for you that I go away, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, saying, For if I go not away, the Comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him. The criteria for the Comforter to come is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should depart. The Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came on this earth. The Holy Spirit was there when Jesus was being baptized, peace be upon him. So how can it refer to the Holy Spirit? 
the Holy Spirit appeared like when um, the apostles they started speaking in tongues. No, but doesn't speak. the prophecy says only if Jesus Christ peace be upon him departs will the comforter come. So this comforter in no way can refer to the Holy Spirit. How come you're believing in that? Aren't you making a mistake? I'm believing that the G, the, the Holy Spirit appeared after Jesus died. No, no. I mean, the Bible says that. That if you don't believe in the Bible, wasn't the Holy Spirit there at the Feast of Pentecost? When Jesus was being baptized, wasn't the Holy Spirit there? It's mentioned in the Bible. The Holy Spirit was there in the womb of the Elizabeth. Yes. Brother, do you know your Bible or not? I do. So the Holy Spirit was there before Jesus Christ came into the earth. Peace be upon him. That means that comforter cannot be the Holy Spirit, right or wrong? Or well, anyway, better go back, do your research, okay. and I'll try and find out who is this messenger who Jesus Christ peace may refer to, and I pray to Allah that may He guide you to the truth. Okay, thank you. Can we have the next question, brother? Yes, brother. It's our turn. It's our turn. Yes. Uh, Salam alaikum. Uh, my name is Burhan Din. I'm an uh, electrical so engineer. Can I have your name? Uh, my name is Burhan Din Abbasi. Uh, I'm an electrical engineering student. Sorry, uh, can you speak a bit slowly and loudly? All right. I would request the. The audio tech, can you increase the volume of my of my microphone? I cannot hear my voice. Can you increase the volume? Yes. Volume of the monitor speakers, please. Hello? Can you increase the, the volume of the monitor speakers? Audio technician, only my monitor speakers, please. My monitor speakers. Here are the monitor speakers. Increase a bit more, please. Increase a bit more. Okay, Jazakallah. Yes, brother, can I have your name? Yes, uh, my name is Burhanuddin Abbasi. Burhanuddin? Yeah. Brother Burhanuddin? Yeah. The rule is let the non muslim finish the question. Okay, I would like to give a chance for a Muslim that, because we're late, late for that. You have to follow the rule or not? Uh, if someone comes with a heart attack, will I treat the heart attack first? Uh, or will I treat the common goal? There is no one beside me in the queue of the Muslim. How, how, how do you know? Because I checked uh, already waiting for one hour. If no one is on any of the microphones, I'll come back. And there are other sisters also waiting before I you. Mean, my question would be straightforward. Please, and let the non-Muslim ask non the question. Are right. there any non-Muslims on the microphone on, on the, the top? Mic number four we have. Okay. Are there any non-Muslims on the microphone on the top on my left? Are there any non-Muslims? No. Mic number four, we have the non-Muslim brothers. Okay, are there any non-Muslims on the microphone on my right on the top? Many revert kiya hua hai. Are there any non-Muslims? Pehle thi, abhi revert ho chuki ho. Okay, so baad mein puchhenge aapko bhen. Reverts ko baad mein. We'll finish the non-Muslims, yeah. we'll come to the reverts and then we'll come to the Muslims. Yes, brother, most welcome. Your name and your profession. Jis sir, salam alaikum. My name is Vishal Kumar Shai, I am from Janakpur. I am leaving. Uh, uh, yes, sir, my question is this. So, many Muslim people say that the Muslim is going to the Jannah. He is going to the Muslim, he is going to the Jannah. He is going to the Muslim, he is going to the Jannah. नवाज पढ़ेगा जन्नत में जाएगा नहीं पढ़ेगा तो नहीं जाएगा आपका सवाल क्या भाई साहब मुसलमान नमाज रहेगा जन्नत में जाएगा नहीं पढ़ेगा नहीं जाएगा ये सवाल है नहीं 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 बहुत मुसलमानों भाई लोग बहुत मुसलमानों भाई लोग बोलते रहते हैं आप जोर का बोलेंगे भाई साहब जरा जोर का बुलंद आवाज से हां ये बात हुई मैं यहाँ खड़ा हूँ इतने इतने घंटे से बात कर आप थक गए बोलिए भाई साहब जी बहुत मुसलमानों भाई लोग बोलते रहते हैं जो मुसलमान है जो गैर मुस्लिम है वो जन्नत में नहीं जाएंगे जो नवाज पढ़ते हैं वो जन्नत में जाएंगे भाई साहब आपने पूछा कि जो मुसलमान है जन्नत में जाएंगे नमाज पढ़ते जन आप भी मुसलमान बनिए आप भी आप भी नमाज पढ़िए आप भी जन्नत में जाएंगे हम हमार नहीं हमारा हमारे हिंदू में भी है बुद्धिस्ट भी है बहुत ऐसा धर्म है जो उसमें बहुत अच्छे मतलब धर्म भी करते हैं आपके हिंदू हिंदुत्व में लिखा है कि कल क्या होता रहेंगे आपने सुने मेरे जवाब मैंने जवाब दिया था पहले आदमी को कि आपके हिंदू धर्म के किताब में लिखा हुआ है
कि कल के अवतार आएंगे आपने सुने क्या नहीं जिनके वालिद का नाम है अब्दुल्ला जिसके वालदा का नाम है आमिना उनको एक गार के अंदर आया रेवल्यूशन वही आए आपने सुने मैंने कहा था पहले कि आपके धन के किताबों में लिखा हुआ है कि कल की अवतार आने वाले मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम कम से कम सौ जगह लिखे ले कितने जगह सौ जगह आप मानते मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम में जी मानते हैं आप मानते हैं मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम अल्लाह के पैगम्बर है जी मैं ऐसे पिया हूँ आप मानते हैं कि भगवान एक है खुदा एक है मैं मानता हूँ आप मानते हैं कि बुद्ध प्रस्ती गलत है गलत है मानते गलत है नहीं सर क्या बोले एक बुद्ध परस्ती मूर्ति पूजा गलत है आप मानते गलत है माशाल्लाह आप मानते क्या मोहम्मद सल्लम पैगम्बर है हाँ है हला सब मुसलमान है मुसलमान होने के लिए दो चीज की जरूरत है पहला एक के मानो के खुदा एक है एक है और बुद्ध परस्ती गलत है मूर्ति पूजा गलत है दूसरी चीज मोहम्मद सल्लम पैगम्बर आप मुसलमान है खलास नमाज बाद में आएंगा पहला मुसलमान तो बनिए जी हमें तो आप देखो मुसलमान बनने के लिए दो चीज की जरूरत है मानना कि खुदा एक है हा? जी बुद्ध परस्ती गलत है मूर्ति पूजा गलत है जी, और मानो कि इस भगवान का पैगंबर है मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ये दो चीज में मानेंगे आप मुसलमान बन गए बाद में आस्ते आस्ते एक बार एडमिशन लो स्कूल में स्कूल में एडमिशन ले लिए आस्ते आस्ते नर्सरी से जूनियर के फर्स्ट स्टैंडर्ड सेकेंड स्टैंडर्ड पर एडमिशन तो लो जी हाँ तो मेरे हिसाब से आप दो चीज में मानते उसका मतलब आप मुसलमान है आप बोलना चाहेंगे इसको मेरे नजदीक आप मुसलमान है आप अरबी में बोलना चाहेंगे जी मेरे नजदीक आप मुसलमान है आप जब मानते खुदा एक है आज जब मानते मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम पैगंबर है उसका मतलब आप मुसलमान है जी हाँ कि नहीं जी हाँ तो आप बोलना चाहेंगे अरबी में आप अरबी में बोलना चाहेंगे अरबी में अरबी के अंदर मतलब मेरे नजदीक आप मानते कि खुदा एक है जी। आप मानते कि मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम पैगंबर है जी। ये दो चीज मिनिमम जरूरत है मुसलमान बनने के लिए तो मेरे नजदीक आप मुसलमान है जी। हाँ कि नहीं जी तो आप अरबी में बोलना चाहेंगे जी मुझे थोड़ा वक्त चाहिए हाँ थोड़ा वक्त चाहिए मुझे थोड़ा वक्त चाहिए सोचने के लिए जी ओके बोलेंगे आपको कोई भी जबरदस्ती करे इस्लाम कबूल करने के लिए कोई जबरदस्ती आप अपने दिल से करना चाहते जी कोई जबरदस्ती नहीं कर रहा है आप अपनी मन से करना चाहते मैं अरबी में कहूंगा आप दोहराइए अशदु जी मैं अरबी में कहूंगा आप उसे दोहराइए अशदु अल्लाह इलाहा इलाह व अशदु अन्ना मोहम्मद अब्दू व रसूल हो मैं शहादत देता हूँ के अल्लाह के अलावा अल्लाह के अलावा कोई मबूद नहीं कोई मबूद नहीं और मोहम्मद मोहम्मद सल्लाह वसलम उसके पैगम्बर उसके पैगम्बर और बंदे है और बंदे हैं माशा मुसलमान हो चुके मैं अल्लाह से दुआ करूँगा कि आपको भी जन्नत में डाले और एक आदमी जब मुसलमान बनता है उसके पिछले गुनाह सब माफ जो अच्छे काम किए वो रहेंगे आपके साथ आपके पूरे पिछले गुनाह माफ मैं दुआ करता हूँ अल्लाह ताला से कि आपको जन्नत में डाले आस्ते आस्ते इन शह आप नमाज सीखो आस्ते आस्ते आपका मुसलमान दोस्त है कि नहीं है कि नहीं अभी आप मुसलमान दोस्त बोला मैं भी मुस्लिम हूँ बोलो सीना ठोक के बोलना हाँ मैं भी जन्ना जाऊंगा इंशाल्लाह इस्लाम के बारे में पता नहीं था सर जी मुझे इस्लाम के बारे में पता नहीं था इस्लाम है? क्या है मुस्लिम क्या है मुझे ये सब कुछ पता नहीं था मुझे करीबन एक साल से जी हाँ परवेज अंसारी जी ने एक साल से उन आपके बारे में बतलाए आपका ऐसा बहुत वीडियो मैंने देखा बहुत अच्छा लगा वीडियो देखे मेरे अच्छे लगे जी यूट्यूब में देखा फेसबुक में भी देखा माशा अभी आप क्या कीजिए आस्ते आस्ते इसके ऊपर अमल कीजिए आस्ते आस्ते अमल कीजिए और मैं अल्लाह से दुआ करूंगा कि कि आपको हिदायत दे आपको सही रास्ता दिखाए और आपको आपको अच्छे तरीके से इस्लाम पे अमल करे और मैं दुआ करता हूं कि आप अपने बाकी दोस्तों को भी ये सही रास्ते पे लेके आए इन शाह
there is another one also want to join here in the beach. On the beach? Yes. Okay, what's your name? Uh, my name is Zuwal. Sorry, what's your name, brother? My name is Wallace Maigua. Wallace. Wallace, do you believe that there is one God? I believe there is one God. Do you believe Jesus is God? I believe Jesus is a messenger and son of God. Messenger of God, correct. Messenger of God and he's also the son of God. Son of God meaning messenger, no problem. But he's not, he's not God. My Bible tells me that he's the only begotten son of God. And uh, that is... Uh, but if you read as I told you, brother, Wallace, I told you what you're quoting is from the Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16, which says, For, so God, for God so of the world, that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Now, if you read the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by 32 Christian scholars, backed by 50 different corporate denominations, they say this word begotten is interpolation, is a fabrication. So if you say begotten son, it is a fabrication. If you say son of God, meaning a messenger of God, no problem, brother. So if you believe he's a godly person, we verily believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is, was the beloved of God, but he was not God, he was a messenger of God. I will beg to differ with you, Dr. Naik, but uh, I have my reasons. Uh, okay. Although that was not my question, I have two questions yes, most of welcome. which I want to ask today. Yes, you're most welcome. Ask your question. The first question is regarding um, Islam yes, and Christianity. We all know that Christianity began or uh, commenced since 2,000 years ago. As uh, well as uh, Islam commenced about 1,400 years ago. Uh, would you be kind enough, sir, to explain to me or uh, to anyone else who may have doubt how you believe uh, about this period f f since the, uh, the time of Christ when Muslim uh, started? Do you believe that uh, these people who existed in that time will be judged or uh, they are going to be the same as us who has come after Islam? The brother asked the question that according to him, Christianity came 2,000 years back and Islam came 1,400 years back. Brother, you're wrong. Islam did not come 1,400 years back. Islam is there since time immemorial. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the founder of the religion of Islam, but he's the last and final messenger. Islam is there right from Adam, peace be upon him. Adam, Abraham, Noah, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. So you have a misconception that Islam came into existence 14 years ago. It's totally wrong. Quran was revealed 14 years back. But Islam is there since time memorial at the time of Moses. If you followed the teachings of Moses, peace be upon him, you would go to heaven. At the time of Jesus, if you followed the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you would go to heaven. Today, you have to follow the teachings of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that was also meant by Jesus, peace be upon him. As I mentioned in my earlier answer, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that year shall he speak. He shall glorify me. So, brother, at the time of Moses, you have to believe in the teachings of Moses, peace be upon him. At the time of Jesus, if you believe in the teaching of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you are following Islam. Moses was a messenger of Islam. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of Islam. And the last and final messenger was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hope that clarifies the question, brother. Dr. Zakir Naik, please, can you tell me whether uh, parts of the Bible of which are speaking the truth or there are others which are lying or... Uh, I don't understand this, please, sir. You ask the question that can you believe the Bible is lying, speaking the truth, etc. We believe that Injil was the Vahi which was revealed to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. But the present Bible, it is a mixture. It contains part of the Vahi given by Almighty God to Jesus. It also contains the word of the prophet. It even contains word of historian. And I'm sorry to say, it even contains pornography. 
So I do not agree the total Bible to be the word of God. It is a mixture. What matches with the Quran, I've got no objection in agreeing that is the word of God. But the Bible even has got pornography. For example, Ezekiel 23. If, I, if you pay me even a million dollars to read Ezekiel 23, I cannot read in the public. It's nothing but pornography. Correct, brother? So I, I do not believe the total Bible is the word of God. The Bible says that Prophet Luth, he did zina, he did incest with his daughter. I cannot believe that a prophet of God can do incest with the daughter. Therefore, everything of the Bible is not the word of God. It is a mixture. It contains the word of God. It contains the word of the prophet. It contains the word of historians. It even contains pornography. My final question, sir. Yes, brother. This is regarding capital punishment. Yes, brother. Of which is illegal in many countries of the modern world. Yes. Uh, this capital punishment, for me, if I would be asked, this is murder. And uh, I'd like to know whether you believe that uh, Allah or my God, of whom I worship and I bow down before, he is the only one who has a right to take life, whether of a sinner or whether of a good person. Because um, I understand, and you earlier mentioned, that it is punishable by death, according to the Holy Quran. The brother said that capital punishment, most of the modern country is illegal, but in Islam there are certain capital punishment, and brother rightly said that only Almighty God has a right to punish. That's the reason only those crimes which Almighty God has given permission to kill is allowed. And I gave you an example that if someone commits rape, there is capital punishment. Brother, I'm asking you the question. Someone rapes your mother. Brother, I'm asking you a question. Someone rapes your mother and the rapist is born in front of you. And if you are made the judge, what punishment will you give him? What will you do? I will kill. Because I'm a human being. Oh, kill. Now you are saying capital punishment wrong. When someone rapes your mother, you want to kill the rapist. Why? Double standards. You are a human being. I am a human being. Allah is Almighty God. He has told that certain crimes which are spreading corruption in the world, like raping, should be put to death. I agree with you. I have asked this question to thousands of non-Muslims. 100% all of them said we will put him to death. Some went to the extent of saying, I will torture him to death. How you said, I will kill him. That's Correct. You are a human being. I am a human being. How dare somebody rapes your mother or my mother? I agree with you, brother. <coughs> this is the law of God because he is spreading corruption. So in this way, brother, there are certain crimes which Quran and the Sharia gives permission as capital punishment. If it is a punishment from God, we agree with it. You and I cannot put anyone to death unless it is permitted by Almighty God. Hope that answers the question, brother. Thank you so much, sir. You are most welcome, brother. Are there any non-Muslims here? Yeah, my Tell name me. is Nant Kumar. I'm production engineer. Uh, I would request the sound. The sound is very bad. Please, could you increase the volume? I'm losing my voice here. I believe Qatar had a very good sound system, and they praised it so much. I'm speaking for the past well, more than three and a half hours. Can you increase the volume, please? I request you. Can you increase the volume? Yes, but there's too much of echo. I would request that the monitor speaker should have been brought much more closer to me. The monitor speakers are going in the air. Can you increase the volume and can you make the volume a bit more clear? The audio more clear, yes. Jazakallah. Yes, brother. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zakir. Wa alaikum as uh, My name is Nant Kumar. I'm a petroleum engineer here. I'm from Pakistan. My question is this, the as per Sanatan Dharam, the birth comes after birth. As per uh, the theory that uh, we have to take birth uh, depending on the karmas and the deeds. We have to take the change clothes. And uh, in, in Hinduism, we are following the same that uh, you are getting a good family, or royal family, or in poor family, or you are disabled from birth, or you are dying in a younger age, it's depending on the deeds or the karmas of the past birth. What does it uh, show in the Islam? Does it the body? 
is giving the based on the karmas or deeds if he is uh, getting birth in the royal family or he is getting birth in the papa otherwise he is getting uh, disabled in the birth so what is the drawback of that to get this diet the brother is asking the question about cycle of birth and rebirth with our with islam if you read in if you read the hindu scripture if you read the vedas it talks about punar janam punar means next Last janam one. means life even islam believes in next life but in the islam you say brother, the same body will become brother let me complete you ask the question correct yeah let me give the answer okay proceed i didn't start the answer also and you sabar inna allah ma sabrin allah ve do do sabar you asked such a long question i kept quiet okay. i am start to give the answer now you give your comment so in in hinduism if you read the vedas it talks about punar miss next janam miss life even quran speaks about next life no way in the veda does it speak about death life death life death life no way it is there in the lower scripture that come to it later on in islam we believe we come in this world once after we die we will be resurrected in the next life that's it even veda speaks about punar janam quran speaks about punar janam but most of the hindus they believe in a philosophy called as samskara samskara means a cycle of birth death birth death birth death which is not to be found anywhere in the vedas we read bhagavad gita bhagavad gita says that how a old body throws away the old clothes so will a body take a new body how a person throws the old clothes and wears new clothes similarly body will throw away the old soul and take a new soul now this is what is said not by the shruti shruti in hindu scripture means word of god smriti means word written by human beings so nowhere in the vedas will you find about this concept of cycle of birth and death and birth and death it is found in the lower scriptures now why did the scholars of hinduism come with the philosophy called the samskara because they could not justify that some people are born in the rich family some people in the poor family some people are born hindi some people are born handicap so they could not blame how can god be unjust so because they could not justify why some people are born handicapped some people are born in rich family some people in poor family they came with this philosophy that he did some mistake in the punar janam sorry in the previous life he did a mistake therefore he is born handicapped and they believe that a living creature takes the human form seven times correct if you do good deeds you are born in the higher category correct mm -hmm. hindu scripture okay. now brother i am asking you a question is evil in the world increasing or decreasing evil depending on the i am asking you the question today in the world is evil increasing or decreasing increasing ha ah, what depending everyone will say increasing unless you don't need the newspapers increasing correct the population of human being is increasing or decreasing increasing so is it contradicting if if evil is increasing population of the world should decrease or not because human is the highest form that is the reason this philosophy is illogical no but in the sense you can do marine life is destroyed brother, let me complete my answer you are asking me question sometimes in between no i am asking you that is increasing or decreasing you gave the answer but i am protecting my question protecting okay how will you protect your question you are asking the the human population is increasing if you go in the back the jurassic uh, area there are too many animals that's now not in the land so we have cut all the forests the jungles is now converting the cities so these animals these plants and these uh, the plants are also the birth this is also the jannat so this types of the uh, rules or the souls of the atmas has been generated in the humans and the animals and trees and plants has been eradicated from that So the plants should become less. The plants are increasing or not? No, plants are getting a cutting. The forest and the jungles is going to be eradicated and they're becoming the cities and uh, villages. Is it increasing or not? Animals are increasing or not? As a whole? No, not increasing. Animals are increasing or decreasing? You don't know. Science. You Google. No. You Google. Just for titles. Just for. You are just people. arguing for sake of arguing, without knowledge. Correct. 
without knowledge. Now I am asking you the question, this cycle of birth and death, it is mentioned nowhere in the Vedas. Is it mentioned? Give me reference. No, I am different upon the Shri Bhagavad Gita. But Bhagavad Gita is not a Shruti, it is a Smriti. Which is more higher, Bhagavad Gita or the Veda? Vedas, is the, we can say it's the word of the God, the four books. Ah, Bhagavad Gita is not the word of God. Bhagavad Gita is a part of Mahabharat. Mahabharat is the Shruti. It's advice given by Sri Krishna to Arjuna. To Arjun. It is part of Mahabharat. Mahabharat, the word of God, is Mahabharat superior or Veda superior? Veda. Uh, correct. I am quoting from higher scripture, you are quoting from low scripture. So now coming back to it. The scholars of Hinduism could not justify why some human beings are born handicapped, some human beings healthy. So they came with this philosophy of karma and dharma, mm -hmm. which is not part of the Veda. In Islam, what do we say? That we come in this world as a test for the hereafter. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mul, chapter number 6 and verse number 2, Allah di khalakal mawta wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. <coughs> This life is a test for the hereafter. So we come in this life only once. Now every time the test differs with different people. Some people, Almighty God, gives them wealth. Now when he gives them wealth, he says that you should give zakat. Every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity. It's called a zakat. So if he gives you wealth, you have to give zakat. If you are poor, you don't have to give zakat. So he makes some people rich and test them, does he give zakat or not? He makes some people poor, they don't have to give zakat. Some people he makes healthy, some people with heart defects. <coughs> now, Quran says, he has made your children as a test for you. Maybe the parents are very pious. They are praying five times a day. They have a child which is born with congenital heart disease. God wants to check them by giving them a test. Do they yet believe in God or not? The person who has which congenital defect, he has done no sin. It is wrong to say that a child is sinful. Why? In Islam we believe every child is born as sinless. How can I be irresponsible? So in Islam, People are born in rich family and poor family as a, as a test. They are born healthy or with defect as a test. Depending upon the test, for example, if in an examination the question paper is very difficult, the correction is lenient, correct? Mm -hmm. If the question paper is easy, the correction is stricter. So depending upon the facility Almighty God has given you, this life is a test for the hereafter. So it is illogical to say that we have been born handicapped because we did a sin in the last life. Illogical. Okay, yeah, just That's the reason in Islam, this life is a test for the hereafter. Same what is mentioned in the Veda. So Quran matches with the Veda. What is mentioned in the other scripture is not matching with the Veda. That is the reason I discard it. Hope that answers the question. Okay, just uh, in addition of this one. Uh, just like a baby is for nine months and uh, by birth he is uh, I dead. can't understand. Speak slowly, clearly and loudly. A baby just of nine months by the time of birth he got died. Sorry? Uh, by birth a baby of nine months he got died. He birth a died baby. So in that case, so he is going to be a uh, day of judgment or he has... Uh, On no the day of judgment he will go to heaven. Direct to heaven? Direct. What mistake has he done? But he has suffered nine months in the Kundi Bakhnar, just in the birth. Therefore, he'll get heaven. In the nine months he suffered, therefore, he'll get heaven. Alhamdulillah, what's the problem? Good, na? Only nine months. Nine months even you suffer and I suffered. Right or wrong? Right. Now we are ready for him, Jannah. For you and I, God will check whether you did good or right. God will ask you, you attended in the lecture of Dr. Zakir Naik. Did you agree with him or not? God will ask you. Yeah, yeah. If you pass the test, Jannah. If you don't pass the test, hell. The if baby got you, saved. What about you? What about you? I will be considered in account based on my deeds. Ah, so what is your deed? I am talking so much logically so, now. So one thing Do you believe there is one God? I believe in one God. Do you believe idol worship is wrong? It's wrong. Okay. But Do you believe me, Prophet? Let, let me answer one thing just before hey, this Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God? Yes, as per the Buddha, as per the Vedas is a... 
Muhammad is a prophet, yeah. Hello, so if you believe in these two things. Just one you, thing, just to proceed before that. I am giving you ticket. You are giving me ticket. <laughs> Who is liable to, because uh, just uh, as per the Bhagavad Gita, the soul is the power, just need to be transferred. He has to be faced for the every result. And, uh, the, uh, and based on your just previous lectures, you told that the time of judgment, the same body will be reincarnated and they will be just like fingerprint will be the same. And uh, based by my understanding from our religion, that the soul is, will be transferred and at the time of judgment, the soul will be liable to be punished or rewarded. That's what you are saying. Yeah, that's Not your Veda. Not the Veda. What? That's from time tell you that if there's a contradiction between a higher scripture and lower scripture, which will you follow? If there's a contradiction but, between Quran and the Hadith, I will say Hadith is Zaif Hadith. But Veda doesn't, Veda doesn't say that the, the physical body will be reoriginated back. Veda says there is Punar Janam, that's it. The Veda doesn't say there is death, life, death, life. That is what is said otherwise. So what, is, what, does Islam, Islam. what does Islam say about soul? Is Islam says and the soul, the, the Islam says that once a person dies, his body dies, he'll be resurrected Punar Janam like the Veda. In the, and then there'll be Isab Kitab. Do you Isab do good Kitab deal? will be liable for the soul or the dead body? Soul and body both. Both? Yes, the soul will go back into the body. Both. So, the, that's the reason when someone asked in my lecture, I said, how will Almighty God be able to reconstruct the bone? The answer is there, Allah will not only reconstruct the bone, He will reconstruct in perfect order the tip of the fingers. Didn't I say that in my lecture? Yeah, yeah. So the body would be resurrected, the body after we die, the soul, body both will be resurrected on the day of judgment and then there will be a final judgment. That is your good deeds more or bad deeds more? If your good deeds are more, then you'll go to Jannah, inshallah. And what will be the condition if he dies around 80s year and old and someone has died in the Irrespective same... whatever EG dies, he will not have the same thing here. It will be different. It will not be the same body like yours and mine. It will be different. You can't say a person died at the age of 80 will be resurrected at the age of 80. If a person dies at the 8 month, not 8 month, it will be altogether different. But a body would be there. You understand? Yeah. It will be different. It will not be like you and me, how we are. But the I, next life would be a different life altogether. But in uh, schools, I have studied in the Islamic schools in Pakistan, that uh, we have heard that uh, in the Day of Judgment, your hand will spoke that this hand has been did mistakes by his, uh, yes. his eyes will speak. So yes. the same eyes will be, the, uh, as per this statement, not this, the same body will be re regenerated. And yeah, asking yeah, now, yeah, the Quran and the Hadith does mention that your organs will be witness against you. Yeah. If you hide something, your eye will give yeah, witness. You did this, whether you did good deed or bad deed. Yeah. So there's no problem at all. Your yeah. organs will be witness. It yeah. would not be the same like this. For example, if you tell me, oh, in the heaven, then after the age of 100, I'll die. No, it's different. Here you require to eat, there it is different. Your body would be there. How it will be? Allah alam. You understand? It will be there. How? We don't know. It will be somewhat different. But that life will be eternal life. Like our life is limited. Some live for the age of 60, some 80, some 100. But that life will be eternal. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you believe there's one God? God is one, yeah. Sorry? One God. And you believe idol worship is wrong? Yes. And you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes. So these are the minimum two things required for anyone to enter the fold of Islam. Believe one God? And uh, Yeah, just uh, you are giving me a ticket now, huh? Not ticket. Yeah, not ticket. Please, yeah, you are giving me a ticket, but what about... I am giving you direction, not ticket. Direction is the ticket no, is the wrong word. I am just following direction. the statement that you given just before. Once someone has uh, confessed the Islam, his previous deeds has been cut off and deleted off. Yes. Not the future, the past. Past. Not the future. So what about his previous deeds? Uh, he has uh, 
did a major kabira guna just he has a, whatever he has done whether he had alcohol no, whether he raped whether he committed murder it was done in why, ignorance why, why does islam say that there's yes. paradise in the why? of mother why because that time he did not agree with the law of almighty god he did not know that murder is wrong he did not know that uh, raping a girl is wrong he did in the ignorance now if you do something in ignorance allah forgives you that is the reason when a person accepts Islam, whatever bad deed he does is washed away. It was done in ignorance. Now today you agree there is one God. Today you agree Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Yesterday you did not agree. So today when you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God and there is one God, you have to follow the rules and regulation. All your previous sins are forgiven. This is good. Why should God hold you responsible for something you didn't agree previously? So God is Rahman or Rahim, is merciful. Your previous sins are forgiven, now a new account starts. All the good things that you did will remain, all your sins would be forgiven and you enter a new life. So would you like to enter a new life? But even, even in the new life, there are the 72 sects and from that only one will go to Jannah. There is no 72 sects. Just uh, yeah, I have heard in that... Uh, Oh, that is the, the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There will be seventy-three sects. Yes. Quran said, "Don't make sects. You don't follow any sect. You only follow Quran and say hadith. If you follow Quran and say hadith and do not make sects, you'll go to Jannah. The moment you start making sects, then there is a problem. What you have to do is read the Quran, follow the Quran, read the say hadith, and follow the say hadith." And this group that follows the Quran and the say hadith go to Jannah. The moment you deviate, I want to follow this human being, I want to follow that human being, then you start deviating. So which sect do you name this one, follow the hadith and Quran? Islam, Muslim. Shia Sunni, bravely. There's no Shia Sunni. In the Quran, show me one word which says Shia Sunni. Where does it say? Why are these? Why these are different sects? That's what I'm asking they you. They have their one Quran, they have one God, they have one Correct. prophet, all is the one, these then why are they have 72? deviations. Based on? Based on their own thinking. Why they are not Muslims? If they deviate from the Quran, they are not. Even they are Muslims, they are deviated in between themselves. That then means how they, they are deviated Muslims. They are practicing Muslims. If you deviate, then you are deviated Muslim. You point out anything from the Quran, I will follow it. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse 158, 159, anyone who makes sex in the religion of Islam, oh Prophet, you have nothing to do with him. So making sex is haram. Anyone makes division, it is prohibited in the Quran. You ask me, what am I? I'm a Muslim. What am I? Muslim. Muslim. Quran says, call a innani minal muslimin. In no less than 20 places. Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. It doesn't say Shia Sunni. Those persons who say I, I they are Shia. But these names coming from Islam. Who has generated Not from these, Islam. Who has they, generated these names, these sects? You ask them who's saying that. I'm not saying. You are the leader, scholar of the Muslim. I'm telling you it is not there in the Quran. Do I call myself Shia? No. I call myself Muslim. So you are asking me, somebody else says two plus is equal to five. Brother Zakir, why is he saying two plus is equal to five? Go and ask him. I did not say it. If I ask them, they will convince me. If I, to th that's it, ask them to give reference from the Quran. You are intelligent or not? Uh, ask sure. them which verse of the Quran says, call yourself Shia. Ask them. Simple. Quran says, Kul hasu burhanakum. Produce your proof, but if you are truthful. Very easy. Anyone takes you for a ride, ask for the reference. The reason people like my lectures is because they come in the question and answer session. I give the Hindus the reference. They go and ask the Pandit. There is the reference. Oh, Majja or Shaitan. <laughs> what Shaitan? I'm giving reference. You come and tell me, Zakir, I'm wrong. I will change. Right or wrong? There is no verse. I'm telling you to accept Islam, not Shiaism. Accept, follow Quran and say Hadith. 
not some other shaykh. Don't follow Zakir also. Zakir in Islam is zero. No, I have been uh, mingled with Muslims many sects. No, no, mingle, so mingle sects. the style of salawat is different, different styles of That is all nonsense. Don't follow Zakir also. Follow Quran and follow Say Hadith. If you follow Quran and Say Hadith, inshallah you'll go to Jannah. I am unable to swim. You are asking me to jump in the mid. How Where I can I? swim? Who's asking you to jump? No, read Quran. <laughs> This is life, boy. This, you know, this, this you know, life, uh, lifeguard. Lifeguard. If I'm going to, if I'm going to ask you to jump with a life vest, will you jump or not? The shark can come. Huh? Shark. No, no. This is the life vest. The life vest will float only. Bas, khalas. What more do you need? You want to jump? No. This is what do you. Ajay. When you jump in water, what do you want to do? Float and then come to the shore. Come to the shore or the life uh, rescue team. Or what? Or life res rescue team. Life? Rescue team. Yes. This is sufficient. This is the key to all the problems. This Quran is the solution to the problems of humankind. The problem is you don't want to listen to this, you want to listen to other human beings. In my lecture, so, I only quoted from Quran or not. Uh, Dr. Zak, this is just on Many scholars in all the sects, they are many learned and very... Uh, no learned scholar, which learned scholar is giving? I will just start to read this one, how I will be able to get the right direction from this one. From which one? From I prove to you today that Quran is the word of God, right or wrong? Quran is? The word of God. Did I prove yeah, or not yeah, today? Yeah, you yeah. prove, Haras, follow the Quran, forget Zakir Naik. Forget Zakir Naik, follow the Quran, forget the other people. Anyone who says, Anything which matches with the Quran, follow it. Doesn't match, throw it away. Even tomorrow, if I say something wrong against the Quran, throw it away. Dr. Zakir is zero in Islam. Correct? Okay, you're right. What is number one Quran? Quran is only one. Sorry? Quran is only one for all. Only one. It, no Quran. Quran doesn't differ at all. So why are these sects are different? That is what I'm trying to tell you. They are taking different translation from this one? No, they are deviating. They are putting their own things. Like how Hindus put their own things, even Muslims put their own things. Correct? That's the reason when we come here, we say, Kul hatu burhan, kum padis your proof, but if you're truthful, in kuntum sadiqin. So the problem is, we have the open question and answer session, even to guide the Muslims. They are believing in this scholar, they are believing in that scholar. You follow Quran and say hadith, khalas. If the scholar says something which matches with the Quran and say hadith, you agree with it. If it doesn't match, you throw it away. Right or wrong? Right. So easy. So you believe there's one God? Yeah, God is one and... Uh, and you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger? Yes. So why don't you take entry into the school? <coughs> I, don't I jump, will, take entry. I will get into the, through the Quran and I uh, will check uh, and uh, just uh, going through the... If I am... Uh, no, no, follow the Quran. I'm not trying to follow anything else. The Quran says there is one God. I gave you the reference. Chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, right? Yeah. Quran says, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of God. Surah Azab chapter 33, verse number 40. Ma kana Muhammadun aba adim mirjalukum, walakhi rasulallah, wa khatamin nabin, wa kana Allah wa kulli shayin alima. That Prophet Muhammad is not the father of any of you men, but is the messenger of Allah. He is the seal of the Prophet. Allah is all knowing, full of knowledge. Who was this? Halas. How much time it takes to read? With reference. How much time? How much time it takes to understand this? Two verses only of the Quran. God is one. And the definition of God Surah Ikhlas, which I said in my lecture. And Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. These two are the two fundamentals for any human being to enter the school of Islam. Once you enter, slowly, slowly, you go from junior KG, senior KG, first standard, second standard. At least enter. Getting admission is the main important thing. If you don't get admission, then where you you uh, keep on going to the Zakir, school, round and round the school, what do they use? Zakir, you don't get this opportunity always. You have been asking so long, see? It's the longest. Uh, just uh, when I was in primary school, the Muslims, uh, friends of me, just were asking from the primary, they just come to Islam, just come to Islam. And uh, there was a ayat, the Safai Nisfa Iman. There is no ayah safai nifta. I, I challenge you. So why why you call this? There is no ayah that cleanliness is half the deen in the Quran. There is no ayah. So it's, a, it's a written because on the Because you were a kid that time. 
You did not ask them for a friend. Now you ask them for a friend. Okay, there's no if, if someone misguided you when you were in the school, what do you do? Now you get matured. Mm -hmm. Correct? There is no text in the Quran which says cleanliness is half the deen. In Sahih no Bukhari? It is not there in the Quran. In Sahih Bukhari? It is a saying. No, not even in Sahih Bukhari. It's not there. MashaAllah, you know Bukhari. Tirmizi. Masha Tirmizi. It's not then Tirmizi also. Not in Sahih Sitta. It's not then Kutubu Sitta also. There's no Sahih Sitta. There's only there's no Sahih Sitta in Islam. There's Kutubu Sitta in Islam. Sahih Sitta means six authentic books. There are only two authentic books, Bukhari and Muslim. It is a saying. It is a saying. Kahawa, you know Kahawat. You know saying. No, but it's like for Sahih Bukhari in uh, Pakistan, we say that Sahih Bukhari, Baad-e Kitab Bari. Are Baad-e Kitab, but it is not then Sahih Bukhari also. You are smiling, Vaisha. Okay. This is, that is the reason, always ask for proof. It's a very common saying that cleanliness is half the deen. It is a saying. It is not even part of anywhere in the Quran, neither any Sahih Hadith. It is a saying. Right or wrong is secondary. Correct? Correct. So don't get misguided. Hmm. Enter the correct school. Okay. Quran. Agreed. MashaAllah. So you want to enter the school? Enter the school. And then follow it. In, enter the student and leave the scholar. Leave, leave the scholar. If the scholar matches with the school, follow it. If the scholar takes you away, leave him. Right or wrong? Right. So, right. so would you like to say it in Arabic? You're from Pakistan, mashallah. You know Bukhari, Tirmezi, all these people who gave Shahada, they don't know that. So much you have studied, mashallah. So you want to say the Shahada? Mashallah, mashallah. You want to say the Shahada? Inshallah. Mashallah. So you believe there's one God? And ah. you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger? Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? My inner sense, just I have, I have uh, see, I have much is any, is anyone, my family, see. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? I myself, I'm not accepting now. Not accepting now? No. But now you said Inshallah. Inshallah means I have to go through the Quran. I have not seen this uh, in detail. Okay, I will, fine. And you are briefing this ayatahs and... Uh, so okay, you're from Pakistan. I know Pakistan is very difficult. It's difficult, huh? Huh. India, Pakistan. <laughs> no, no, Pakistan. Anyway, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he give you hidayah. Inshallah. And may you guide you to the true part, inshallah. inshallah. Then we have the next question. Thank you. Thank you, Rakhine. Are there non Muslims on the top? A non Muslim on the microphone on the top? On the beach side. On the beach side. Wait, we'll come to the beach afterwards. Are there non Muslims on the microphone on the right top? Non Muslims? Non Muslim. No, reverted. Uh, revert afterwards, inshallah. We'll come back to you. Allah. Yes, brother. <laughs> we'll come back. You're next in the queue. Inshallah, we will not end the session without taking your question. Sir, uh, while your son was speaking here, a question came to my mind. He was telling about the similarities between Moses and Muhammad, that there are many more similarities between them, such as being born in a natural way, uh, have died uh, for a natural cause, and have raised family. And there are many more similarities between these two, uh, this, and Moses and Mohammed, than Moses and uh, Jesus. Because Jesus was not uh, born in a natural way, he was not uh, died in a uh, natural cause, okay? So uh, aren't these similarities or uh, proofs that Jesus was in fact the son of God, or more than a prophet? Brother, ask you a question based on the speech of my son. Yeah. Brother, if you know the context, what my son was quoting is a prophecy in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, which says, which says that I shall raise thee up a prophet. Almighty God is telling Moses, peace be upon him. I shall raise thee up a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall command all that I say. So here, the Christian missionaries say that this prophecy refers to Jesus, peace be upon him. 
So we are defending and saying this prophecy does not refer to Jesus, peace be upon him, because Jesus was not a brethren of Moses, peace be upon him. Jesus was a Jew, peace be upon him, Moses was a Jew. For a brethren, you have to be children of the brothers, cousins. So the Arabs are cousins of Jews. So Prophet Muhammad was a brethren of Moses, peace be upon him. It should be like Moses, and you rightly said, Moses had a natural birth, Muhammad had a natural birth, peace be upon them. Jesus Christ had an unnatural birth. Moses, peace be upon him, died a natural death. Muhammad died a natural death, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ did not, peace be upon him. So he's unlike, doesn't make him God. It does not make him fulfill the prophecy. But do you, you understand? Believe, does, Muslim, uh, does Islam uh, believe about the miracles that Jesus performed? Of course such, we believe. Such as walking on uh, water, such as healing a uh, sick person. Many, not all. Walking on water is not mentioned in the Quran, but I told you in my talk, we believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. You believe that? Yes, but uh, uh, these miracles, you were telling me that they are not on your Quran, but they are in the Bible. So no, they are in the Quran. This is in the Quran what I told you. No, what I told you about walking on uh, on. Uh, Are which is the bigger miracle? Giving life to the dead is bigger miracle, or walking on the earth is bigger miracle? On the water, which is bigger? It's written there. No, which is bigger miracle? Giving life to the dead is a bigger miracle, or walking on the water is a bigger miracle? Which is a bigger miracle? Sorry. Which is a bigger miracle? I giving life to the dead or walking on the water? given life to a dead. When I, when I believe in the bigger miracle, why are you running after the small miracle? I don't understand the logic. I believe, but I always said, all these miracles are done with the permission of God. The miracle does not make you a prophet of God. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 24, verse number 24, for there are many false Christ and false prophets who will come and will deceive the very elect. So miracle is not the test. All these miracles were done by Almighty God. That does not make Jesus Christ peace be upon him God. If Moses parted the sea, does that make Moses God? Does that make Moses God? Not more than God, but his son. Moses is the son of God. Yeah. Where does Jesus. it say in the Bible? From Jesus. He was son of God. Moses was son of God? No, Moses no, he was a prophet. Moses parted the sea. Does it make him God? Adam, peace be upon him, was, Moses was born without a father, correct? Adam was born without father and mother, does it make him God? No. This is a miracle. If you say Jesus is God because he had no father, Adam is a bigger God, peace be upon him, he had no mother and no father. All this is not the test. Do you understand? These are miracles done by the prophets of God, done by God. To prove that they are messengers, right or wrong? Then you have to say Adam is a bigger God, right or wrong? Do you believe Adam is a bigger God? Uh, sorry? Do you believe Adam is God? Adam? Is God? No. Even I don't believe, peace be upon him. Just because he did a miracle, that does not make him God. Why? Yeah. That's the reason they were all messengers of God, but not God. Thank you. Good. So now you believe Jesus is the messenger of God? Both uh, messenger of God and son of God. No, son of God, again, I told you, son of God, God has got son by the tongue. Ephraim is son of God. Israel is son of God. As many are led by the spirit of God, the sons of God. God has got son by the tongue in the Bible. But none of them, the previous prophets, uh, they are mentioned in the Bible as having come from the, uh, from the paradise, as Jesus was. Such, such as uh, John 6, 23, that he was, he came, uh, he came before so, Adam. So, so he, all the other prophets came from hell. No, Jesus was existing before Adam. That's what we, uh, we believe. Everyone in, in the Bible, it says, everyone was present in the plan of God before they came. Even no, you were present in existing. Even you were existing, even I was existing, correct? That does not make you and me God. Everyone was existing in the plan of God. That's what the Bible says. Everyone was existing in the plan of God before we came in this world. 
That does not make you and me God. Existing in his plan, not in reality. He was already existing with God. That's Where does it say? Give me the reference. John uh, 6, 23 and... What does it say? Mm. What does it say? What does John chapter 16, verse 23 say? Tell me. That he, he came from God. That's why he... He, he came from God. Authority. Everyone came from God. Even you and I came from God. But he came from... Uh, we didn't come... I mean from the heaven, you know. So he came, we came from, from hell. Heaven. No, 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 no. You came from hell? But we, came, we are humans. We are human. All of us are creations of Almighty God. There's not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God of Isis, worship me. You point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says, I am God or where he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. But he says he was son. He says with his words, he was son. He says. You are, I think you don't understand English. Ephraim is son of God. Abraham is son of God. Does that make them God? But some, they had, I mean, they had a natural mother and father. Adam had well, natural mother and have, father. He didn't have, but Jesus existed before him. Adam was son of God is mentioned in the Bible. What are you going to do? No, but he didn't say it. Who didn't say it? He didn't say it. What did Adam, he say? Adam didn't say it, you know. But what Jesus, he did not say? Bible is written that, that he came. That what you're talking, there is not a single unequivocal statement. Do you understand English, brother? Yeah. Which country do you come from? Huh? Which country do you come from? Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. There is not a single unequivocal statement. Not a single unambiguous statement. Anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God, I am God, three words. Or where he says, worship me, two words. You point out anywhere in the Bible, I'm ready to accept Christianity. You're beating around the bush, son of God. Many people are son of God. You're beating around the bush. You're beating around the bush. Did you hear my I, I got challenge? You, I got you. I got you yes. My challenge is unequivocal statement. You got it? Yeah. Unambiguous. I am God. How many words? Three words. Three words yes. Worship me. Two words. I'll accept Christianity. Okay. Nowhere in the Bible. All this, what you are saying, is beating around the bush, which has been sent to many other people also. You understand? Yeah. So I want to go and study the Bible, do research, and come to the truth. Thank you. You are most welcome. Can we have questions from the beach, please? Hello? Yes. Hello? Can we have the questions from the beach? Hello? Yes, brother, Hello? most welcome. Hello? Yes, brother, we can hear you. Can the sound person increase the volume, please? The sound technician. The sound technician, please, could you increase the volume of the... I said my voice is audible now. It is not your fault. It is the fault of the technician. The sound technician, can you increase the volume of the microphone on the beach? Hello? Yes, brother. I said good evening. Uh, good evening, brother. My name is Neeraj. I am from India. Yes, brother. Mashallah, very good. I love you, brother. I love you too, sir. Uh, yes, brother. What's your question? I saw your all debates, uh, huh? uh, which you did uh, with all scholars in India. So I really inspired from your uh, speech. Did you watch the debate with Shri Ravi Shankar? Yeah, sir. I, I, did you watch the debate with Shri Ravi Shankar? Yes, yeah, sir. I, I saw. I saw. How that. did you like it? Oh, sir, it was very awesome, sir. I awesome. Really, yeah, sir. I really inspired from that debate. And I need to convince, uh, I, I convinced from that debate and I really, um, what to say, I need to convert, I need to revert myself. MashaAllah. Brother, do you believe there is one God? Yes, sir, I do believe. Brother, do you believe that idol worship is wrong? Uh, yes, sir, I do believe that uh, idol worship is wrong. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, sir, Prophet Muhammad is the Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, sir, I do believe. Brother, is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No, sir, it's my wish. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No, sir. It's Are you doing own... out of your own free will? Yes, sir, I'm doing all. Inshallah, I'll just say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Yeah. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. 
illallah wa ashhadu wa ashhadu anna anna muhammadan muhammadan abduhu abduhu wa rasuluhu wa rasuluhu i bear witness i bear witness that that there is no god there is no god but allah but allah and i bear witness i bear witness that that prophet muhammad prophet muhammad is the messenger is the messenger and servant of allah and servant of allah mashallah big muslim and i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that may he grant you jannah may he forgive all your sins and i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that may he guide through you the other people move to the religion of truth thank you thank you, so much. Thank you. Thank you very much brother can we have the next question from the beach uh, there is more question at the beach uh, are there any brothers or sisters on the beach would like to ask a question who are non muslims sorry i can't hear you uh, there are no non muslims on the beach uh, okay no non muslim will 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 check if there are non muslims here muslim muslim are there any non muslims here on this microphone muslim are there any non muslims on the top no non muslims are there any non muslims on the right no that's are there any non muslims here any non muslims non muslim yes brother come in the front you can break the queue hello sir good evening good evening yeah I, my doubt is in this live session i have seen nearly 6 to 7 non muslim brothers they have accepting this shahada right in front of you and they have been you have been making them to read the shahada okay now they were accepting it means they are getting into the islam education school okay then after they were not practicing so what would be the final result if they were accepting the shahada then after there is no practice it means proper practice so what would be the, the final result at the last day of judgment for them whether the allah is going to punish them without practicing you have just uh, in front of jagan nayak you has uh, accepted the islam's la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah so this question may be raised i think so right the brother asked a very good question that he has seen about seven or eight people accepting islam yeah i think there are seven or eight First was four, I think there were eight, eight people who accepted Islam. Yeah, and they said the shahada. What if they don't practice? Yeah. Brother, why are you being a pessimist? Be optimist. What if they practice? La ilaha illallah no. Muhammadur Rasulullah. No, I am asking the question. Sorry, I that am. I am telling you. Okay. Why are you a pessimist? Pessimist means. Sorry. Pessimist. Do you know the meaning of pessimist? No, sorry. Just pessimist means a person who thinks negative. Okay. Why don't be an optimist? Okay. You should say, "What if they practice Islam? Inshallah, they'll practice Islam." Okay. Coming to your question, what if someone takes the shahada in front of me? Taking shahada in the front of me is no benefit. Yeah. Whether you take in front of me, behind me, taking shahada is important. If you take in front of Doctor Zakir Naik, no extra marks. Okay. Doctor Zakir Naik zero in Islam. Okay. Taking is important. Whether in front of me or in front of you, no problem. Point number one. Point number two, that. If they practice Islam, inshallah they'll go to Jannah without doubt. What if they don't practice Islam? Chances are how much? Theory of probability, fifty-fifty, correct? Okay, yeah. Fifty-fifty, na? Yeah, fifty-fifty. Toss a coin, yes or no? Fifty-fifty. Hypothetically, they don't practice Islam. Okay. If they practice, fifty percent Jannah. Yeah, fifty percent done. Fifty percent Jannah also, Alhamdulillah. Better okay. than going to Jannah. Point okay. number one. I'm coming to your question. Wait. Maximum, minimum chance is fifty. So I'm telling, if this person doesn't take shada, if you don't take shada, okay. what will happen? Janna. If you take fifty percent, fifty percent janna. You know the Quran says on the day of judgment, the non-Muslim will say, "We would not mind giving you the full wealth of this world. Give us janna. Janna is more valuable than the full world. Correct?" Yeah. No full world, you are getting fifty percent. What a great deal! Right or wrong? Right. If I tell you, I'll give you a million dollar. Right. What do you do? You stay awake full night, na? <laughs> million dollar, six crore rupees, seven crore. Yeah. What will you do? You stay awake full night, na? Yeah. So, this is much more than billions and trillions of dollar. Now, coming to your question, if the person practice Islam fifty percent, inshallah, go to Jannah. If he doesn't practice. If the person doesn't practice yet, if he does not do shirk, and if he believes there is one God, okay. and if he believes Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, yet high chances he will go, but he will go late. 
if he doesn't practice well, he will go to hell first. Okay. Maybe it's little punishment. But if he doesn't do shirk, Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 48, and Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 116, if Allah wishes, he may forgive any sin, but the sin of shirk, he will never forgive. That means, if he accepts Islam, he drinks alcohol, and he gambles, and he cheats, maybe little days he'll go to hell, get some punishment, maybe God will take him out and put him in hell after that. Other people who do shirk, 100%, forever, in nar, in hell. Yet it's a good deal, right or wrong? Yeah, right, sir. So, do you believe there's one God? Yeah. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger yeah. of God? Yes? Yeah. Would you like to say the Shada? But, but, sir, sir, one a second. One but you have to believe in it, huh? Yes, if sir. you say only to fool me, wait, wait, wait. Okay. If someone says, okay, I'm not Rasulullah, he doesn't believe. God knows, I will not know. God knows, then no Jannah. Okay. You actually have to believe there's one God. You actually have to believe idol worship is wrong. See, that's the reason a brother, he said, he wants to accept Islam, correct? Yeah. And then he said that, I believe Jesus is God. I didn't give him shahada. Did you notice that? Yeah. Ah, that means I'm not just counting. <laughs> because he said, no, I believe Jesus is God. Okay, Jesus is God, that means you cannot become a Muslim. Even if you give me a million dollars, I will not give him shahada, correct? Yeah. That means I'm not just, I'm listening. Now, if someone cheats me and tells me a lie, I cannot go into his heart and check. Okay. And so, you have to really believe there's one God. You have to believe that idol worship is wrong. You have to believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Then if you don't follow yet, there are chances you'll go to Jannah. Good bargain. There are many Muslims who are doing wrong things. Yeah. But they are not good Muslims. Maybe they will never enter Jannah. I don't know Allah Wallam. But they can yet go. But if you die as a mushrik, if you die doing shirk, 100% hellfire. No option at all. And one more thing, sir. You have informed uh, just before the session, uh, one of my <laughs> non-Muslim brothers has uh, speak to you, that you have asked the question him. In our Vedas, it was mentioned that the Prophet Muhammad will be coming back, right? So he had accepted that, yes, I accept that our Vedas, uh, my, our Vedas is accepting the thing. So you told that if you are accept the thing, it means that you are accepting that uh, Allah is one, it, it means the God is one, Correct. and the Muhammad Prophet is the one only messenger. Correct. So then after you have told that, if you are accepting the same thing, then I am and you are the same one. Correct. Right? Basic things are same, Basic not totally. Thing, right? Correct. Okay. If we two are same, then what there is a difference between worshipping in, uh, in that way and worshipping ah, in this way, what is the difference? Very good question. Now, many Hindus, they say, believe in Veda, but they don't know Prophet Muhammad is mentioned in the Veda, correct? Right, okay. So actually, they are not practicing Hindus. The okay. many Christians say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus more than them. I'm circumcised. They are not circumcised. Jesus said, don't have alcohol. Peace be I don't have alcohol. They have alcohol. The Bible says, don't have pork. I don't have pork. They have pork. I am more Christian than the Christians themselves. I love Jesus. Peace be upon him. They are all fake. Yeah. All fake, right or wrong? Now, I told you I'm a Hindu. Yes. Hindu means coming from the land of Indus Valley. Geographical definition, yes. right or wrong? Right or right. Not a religious definition. Yeah. Religious nature, Sanatana Dharma. Now, I tell them that why don't you believe your Veda? I don't agree, I don't agree everything of the Veda to be the word of God, but the Hindu believes. So I tell, let us agree what's coming. Quran says believe in one God, Veda says believe in one God. Quran says don't do idol worship, Veda says don't do idol worship. Quran says believe in Prophet Muhammad, Veda says. Let us agree. Now, previously you were a Hindu, not knowing that Veda says believe in Prophet Muhammad. Now you know, now we are together in one part, main part. Okay. Now, once you say you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger, you have to follow the message, right or wrong? Right, but if, one more thing. No, no, so when you believe in the message, what is the message? Quran. Right or wrong? Right. So indirectly I'm telling them, your Veda is telling, come close to Quran. Your Bible is telling, come close to Quran. Right or wrong? Right. I'm not criticizing the Veda. I'm not criticizing. I can. I can give a lecture if my son gave for one or ten minutes similarities. I can give five hours on dissimilarities, differences. Okay. 
If I can give a lecture three hours on similarity to Islam and Hinduism, I can give five hours on differences between Islam and Hinduism. But I don't want to create fight. I love my Hindu brothers. I love my Christian brothers. Okay. That's the reason people hear my talk. And many of them accept. Some of them don't like me. Okay. But yet I love them. Yeah. So brother. Fine sir. The thing is, Right now I can't uh, read this Shahada because I am getting the teachings about the Quran from three months since I have been reading this Quran Very with good. one of my colleagues, two of them are uh, right now they are here. Mm. So I want to fulfill the total Quran then after I will... Total Quran you cannot fulfill brother. No, it means... No I, Muslim I can say I, I follow 100%. Even I cannot say I am a, I am a human being. The 100%... I am not saying that I see, want to fulfill Quran. See, I want one, to read it completely. I want yeah. to know every point. What it has been mentioned. Brother, how long will you live? How long? How long means, will you live? I can't tell you the uh, correct one. Suppose I, if I tell you, if I tell you there is a deal okay. of one million dollar, tell okay. me yes or no within one hour. What will you do? What will you do? For life. You not say let me do research for one month. One hour, yes or no, million dollar gone. What do we do? This is not million dollars, this is trillions of dollars. Okay. And see, you I don't know how long will I live. I don't know whether I'll go back to Bombay or not, correct? Yeah, right. Even you don't know. Once you're convinced, accept it. If you like this school, it's good to enter the school. You don't say, I'll do research. What research? By the time you grow old, you will not be able to enter the school. Correct? Then right. you have to go to university. By the three months. Three months. Without act, it means without any fulfillment about any... No, two, no, two fulfillment. No, no, that, no, this not, two I'm not fulfillment speaking about of that type of fulfillment. Okay, two you fulfillment have already informed, you just check with the Islam, what is the Islam? I want to understand what type, what was mentioned, what is there inside. See, once you accept in these two things, you do, you know 100 things about Islam, you follow 80 and don't follow 20, no problem. Okay, it's not, a, it's not a problem for me to read Shah. You know, there was a girl in Japan. Okay. There was a girl in Japan and she told me, Brother Zakir, I cannot give up pork. I said, well, I love it. Can you give up alcohol? She says, yes. She was wearing a scarf. I said, why wearing a scarf? No, my Muslim friend wear a scarf. I like it. Do you believe in one God? She says, yes. Do you believe in pork? She said, yes. I said, give the shahada, continue eating pork. People were shocked. I said, maybe after two weeks you'll stop. Maybe after two months you stop. Maybe after two years you stop. Even if she doesn't stop, yet she can go to Jannah or not. There are many Muslims who are having alcohol. Drinking alcohol is a bigger sin than having pork. Right or wrong? Right. This is hikmah. At least the shirk is not there in her life. I will not say no, no, unless you don't, have, unless you don't stop eating pork, you can't give the shada. Fool. Okay. Right or wrong? Right. And what research you want to do? Yes, get convinced. Yeah, convinced. But one more thing. Yeah, uh, but. Yeah, Sanatana but. Dharm, right? Lekin, lekin, you would, lekin, but is a big question. Yes, brother. I see what I Sanatana Dharm ke baare mein jana hai mereko. Jana na, no problem. I want to know what the thing is. As per Quran, 1400 years since, it means the Quran was in existence. Yes. So what about the Sanatana Dharm? Sanatana so Dharma, according to Swami Vivekananda, the present Veda that you have is a very small percentage. Most of the Vedas have been lost. Okay. They do not know when exactly the Veda came into existence. Okay. Who did it come to? Yet they believe it is the word of God. Most of the scholars say the Vedas is 4,000 years old, but according to Swami Dhyan and Saraswati, he said the Veda is 1,310 million years old. How many? 1,310 million years old. But most of the scholars say 4,000. Now when you do research, you come to know, yet today it is not there in the pure form. There is no book on the face of the earth which is in 100% pure form besides the Quran. Okay. You put it to the test of science, all the other religious scripture will fail. You put the Bible to the test of science, it will fail miserably. You put the Veda to the test of science, it will fail. Quran is the only religious book on the face of the earth which is yet there in its pure form for the last 1400 years. But what was your opinion regarding this? It means how many years it was the existence, Sanatandaram? 
another dumb i lead from the scholars of hinduism no they differ the right thing, but you have a slight knowledge yes. because why i was asking this question yes. is sanatan dham is closer to islam than the other hinduism yeah. sanatan dham is much more closer to islam it's a more pure form of hinduism than the other religion other sect sorry because, i give it to you because that uh, why i have raised this question is if you go with india most of the them you will be having hindus okay muslim yes. percentage is less compared yes. to hindus yes if the sanatan dham is having large extent existence then this uh, uh, islam it may be i think this would be the oldest one if that is your logic in that the world the if that asking. is your logic in the yeah. world there are more muslims than hindus <laughs> Uh, that is also anyway right in islam majority doesn't win in islam majority doesn't win suppose i am alone muslim and if there are thousand hindus around me that doesn't mean they are right no, this no. is a wrong logic quran says in surah isra chapter number 17 verse number 81 it's mentioned in the quran wa qul ja al haqq al batil inna al batil qana zauka when truth is heard in falsehood falsehood perishes for falsehood is by its nature bound to perish so never does it mean that majority wins majority is not right what is haqq is correct do you understand so yeah. this logic that majority wins i will benefit me because there are more muslims in the world than you and you are living in qatar in qatar also there are more muslim correct yeah in islam majority doesn't win you check it with reason check it with logic check it with your heart and you'll come to know which is true sure okay thank you so yet you're not prepared <laughs> the moment already when i started i have read the kalma sorry the moment when i have started i know i know you said the kalma but maybe you said it just for reading see okay, one now. is saying with conviction one is just reading and you read it if you read it i know you read it One is with conviction, yes, believing there's one God, believing Prophet Muhammad. That is the real thing. Reading like that, Kalma, you read very fast. Okay, I am ready to ready. Oh, okay, Mashallah. You believe there's one God? Yeah. And you believe idol worship is wrong? Yeah. And you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? Yes. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No. Are you doing out of your own free will? No. Are you doing out of your own free will? Sorry. Are you doing it out of your own free will? Yes, yes. Sorry. Okay. I'll say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashhadu, Ashhadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, Illa Allah, Illa Allah, Wa Ashhadu, Wa Ashhadu, Anna, Anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, Abduhu, Abduhu, Wa Rasuluhu, Wa Rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness that that there is no god but Allah. There is no god but Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Is the messenger and servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. Mashallah, we are Muslim and I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that may He make you strong, brother. I pray to Allah that may He make you strong and Inshallah I feel you will be amongst the strongest. Thank you, thank you. Because you know, if it's difficult, it's strong. And I pray to Allah that may He make you guide other people to the truth. May you go to Jannah. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Are there any non-Muslims on the beach? As long as non-Muslims are there, my energy is high. Are there any non-Muslims on the beach? On the microphone, are there any non-Muslims on the beach? No, sir. Muslims. Only Muslims. Are there any non-Muslims here? non muslims muslim are they non muslim on the top in the lady section no there's a reward there no non muslim they will come to the reward are they non muslim here no no is he a non muslim directly be after afterwards a non muslim here a non muslim on the beach mashallah always try my level best to at least complete all non muslims you know i was in malaysia last month and i started the talk at quarter to 8 till quarter to 3 yet there were non muslim asking one more sir one more sir one more sir it was the longest lecture of my life 6 hours lecture with question answer session previously it was dubai dubai was 5 and 1/2 hours i started after tarawi and we had to end before sohur you know it was sohur time you know we cannot we cannot start the fast without having sohur so we had to end at 5 and 1/2 hours that was the record but last month in malaysia in malaysia in kl mashallah i broke that record it was 6 hours 
Now, mashallah, it's not long. It's just, I think I came at 9.40. 10, 11, 12, 1. Oh, only four hours, two hours to go, no problem. <laughs> anyway, once the non-Muslim ends, then the program is close to the end. Okay, we'll, we'll allow the reward sister, the reward sister to ask the question. Yes, sister, most welcome. Assalamu alaikum. मेरा नाम जैनब है और मैं इंडिया से हूँ मैं रिवर्ट होके सात साल हो गया है मैंने कुरान पढ़ा है तो उसके अंदर एक सूरे अल अजाब में शायद मुझे याद नहीं है लेकिन उसमें लिखा हुआ है जो भी रिश्तेदार में शादी करते हैं वो सिर्फ और सिर्फ हुजूर के लिए है मोमिन के लिए नहीं है लेकिन इंडिया में पाकिस्तान में सभी जगह पे रिलेटिव में शादी होती है तो ये जायज है या नहीं है The sister asked the question, she's quoting a verse of the Quran of Surah Azab, chapter 33, that for the Prophet he can marry among the relatives and for the others they cannot. This is totally wrong. What the verse of the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 23, 24, that you can, you should not marry, you should not marry that woman which, I, which is the wife of your father. You cannot marry a mother. You cannot marry that woman which is the sister of your father. So there are certain close relatives who you cannot marry. Otherwise, per se, first cousin in marriage is allowed. So the Quran gives permission that for the Muslims you cannot marry your direct relation. You cannot marry brother, sister, son, mother, daughter, father, and your direct paternal and maternal uncles. There are few restrictions. The other relatives, you can marry. This is given in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 24. For the Prophet, there is an, another exception that from this time now onwards, you cannot exchange any woman from the woman that you have because the Prophet had more than four wives. Once the revelation came that maximum you can give four wives, for, for the Prophet, there was an exception. He could keep more than that. But that doesn't mean the Quran gives permission for the Muslims in general to marry the relatives except those which are mentioned in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 23 and 24, that is brother and sister, mother and son, daughter and father, paternal uncle, maternal uncle. First cousin per se you can marry. Hope that answers the question. No, I mean, I mean, Surah Al-Azab, maybe Yasin was the first one, and from 49 to 50, it was written in the Tafsir, it was written in the Tafsir. What was written? कि आप मामा की लड़की, पुपू की लड़की, ये सब कुछ सिर्फ और सिर्फ हुजूर के लिए जायज है, उम्मत के लिए नहीं। ये ऐसा नहीं लिखा हुआ है। नहीं, मैंने पढ़ा है। मैं आपको बोल दूँ, आपको गलत है। उसमें ये लिखा हुआ है, सूरे आज़ाब चैप्टर 33 वर्स नंबर 49 टू 52। ये कुराने। उनके लिए एक्सेप्शन there are exceptions that he can marry more. And he can even marry the close relatives who the normal cannot marry. But jo India, Pakistan, mein hota, it is following the verse of the Quran of Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 23 and Maybe it's Surah 63. No, it's the same Surah. I know, I know, I know. You're saying that I'm reading double. I've read two times and I've read it from auntie. What is it? I mean, it's written clean. You're the girl of the girl, the girl of the girl. Oh, the girl of 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 the girl. I'm giving you a reference to you. But in the Quran, it's written that it's not only for the people of the people. Where is it written? You have a wrong idea. I have a wrong idea. I have a wrong idea. I have asked a lot of people to ask me and have asked me and have asked me. Don't ask me from the auntie. I have asked you from the Quran. I have asked you from the Quran. कुरान के अंदर वो बिल्कुल जो लिखा है पुपी के लड़की से शादी कर सकते लिखा है वो आम मुसलमान के लिए भी है 
आप जो कि गॉड हैज गिवन यू स्पॉइल्स ऑफ वन डॉटर्स ऑफ यू अंकल इन द फादर साइड एंड डॉटर्स ऑन द साइड अंकल इन द मदर साइड सूरा अल्लाह साहब की 49 से 50 वाली आयत पता पता है मुझे देखो आप क्या कर रहे हैं बताता एक पर्टिकुलर वर्स जो है ना मिडल ऑफ दैट वर्स इट से दैट एंड अ बिलीविंग वुमन इफ शी गिव्स हरसेल्फ टू द प्रॉफिट एंड द प्रॉफिट डिजायर्स टू आस्क हर इन मैरिज अ प्रिविलेज फॉर यू ओनली मतलब मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम कौन सी भी औरत से कर सकते हैं वो पहला वर्स इज कॉमन फॉर एवरीवन ये सिर्फ प्रॉफिट के लिए है बाकी नहीं समझे आप ना मैं नहीं समझी I can I can only say it in English, क्योंकि English translation नहीं समझे आप English समझ में आता है आपको थोड़ा 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 तो इसके अंदर ये लिखा हुआ है कि and the daughters of your uncle on the mother's side who migrated with you and a believing woman if she gives herself to the prophet and the prophet desires to ask her in marriage a privilege for you only. Not for the rest of the believers. मतलब एक औरत अगर कहती है कि करना चाहते हैं या मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम बोलते हैं मैं औरत से करना चाहता हूँ तो औरत को करना चाहिए। मैं अगर कोई लड़की से पूछा तो उसको मुझे शादी करना जरूरी नहीं है। समझ रहे हैं? हाँ। Prophet एक अलग दर्जे पे है। अच्छा। तो मतलब वो जिसको चाहते हैं वो ऐ क्या वो अपने फूफू की लड़की से कर सकते हैं वो आम मुसलमान के लिए भी जायज है सिर्फ ये लास्ट पार्ट खुशूस और मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम के समझे आप वो पहले पार्ट को आप मर्ज कर रहे हैं दूसरे पार्ट से आप समझ रहे हैं नहीं हाँ मतलब एक ही आयत में तो मैं समझ नहीं पाई एक आयत के बहुत से हिस्से हैं पहला हिस्सा में लिखा हुआ है कि आप क्या आप अपने अंकल के बेटी से कर सकते हैं आंटी की बेटी से कर सकते हैं ये लिखा हुआ है सूर्य निशा में भी वो जवाब मेरा सही है जवाब बदला नहीं लेकिन आपके सहूलत के लिए वापिस से मैंने आपको खुश करने के लिए खोल के पढ़ रहा समझे आप मेरा और एक क्वेश्चन है एक एक क्वेश्चन मेन जी बहुत से लोग खड़े सब मुसलमान ही जाए छोटा सा क्वेश्चन है क्वेश्चन छोटा रहता है जवाब लंबा रहता है मेन जी नरा मैं बाकी लोग से एक एक राउंड तो पूरा करूं बस एक लास्ट क्वेश्चन है बस अच्छा पूछे मतलब हिंदू लोग जब मर जाते हैं उनको जलाते हैं और मोमिन को तो कबर में अजाब होता है तो जब मोमिन को गाड़ देते हैं तो उनकी आत्मा उनके अंदर जाती है उनका अजाब स्टार्ट हो जाता है तो हिंदू की तो बॉडी नहीं होती तो उनको अजाब कैसे होता है भाई साहब कबर के अजाब के लिए होने के लिए कबर में जाना जरूरी नहीं है अगर कोई डूब के मर जाता है तो उसको अजाब नहीं होगा नहीं उसकी बॉडी को दफनाएंगे या जलाएंगे हिंदू को छोड़ो अगर एक मुसलमान एक घर में आग में जल जाता है तो उसका अजाब नहीं होगा नहीं वही कैसे होगा पूछ रही हूँ कैसे होगा वो वो मरने के बाद मालूम पड़ेगा अब ये अल्लाह ताला को जैसा देने के आदाब देंगे आप सब आदाब है है अभी कैसा होगा वो अल्लाह जाने मैं थोड़ी अल्लाह हूँ और क्यों इतनी फिकर करने का है हम जब सही रास्ते पर रहेंगे तो आदाब भी नहीं होगा ना आपको ज़्यादा फिकर है कैसा आदाब होगा आपको ये फिकर होना चाहिए कि मैं गुनाह नहीं करूँ गुनाह नहीं करेंगे तो आदाब भी नहीं होगा ना इनशाला लेकिन सभी से होता तो है इसीलिए तो तो अल्लाह से इस्तिकफार करो अल्लाह से इस्तिकफार करो क्या कि अल्लाह ताला हमारे गुनाह को माफ करे इंशाल्लाह अल्लाह माफ करेगा इंशाल्लाह तो तो अल्लाह शुक्र है कैन वी हैव द सिस्टर ऑन द टॉप देर कैन वी हैव द सिस्टर ऑन द टॉप देर हेलो सलाम वालेकुम ब्रदर आई आई वेंट थ्रू योर स्पीच अबाउट द सेकंड मैरिज बाय मैन uh men are very much fond of having more than one marriage and islam do allow them for that even for that they no need they don't need a permission from their first wife second wife in case they are going for third or fourth my question to you is that there is less patience among the female side and the social circumstances where there is very hard to lead one family when the person wants to go for two three when they know they can't have justice with them in such condition certain states have made it a compulsory law that man before going that should get permission from the first wife still do you say that avoiding the social circumstances or corruption among the relation where man mostly disowns the second or third wife 
or they divorce them just for the social pressures or family pressures afterwards, do you still say that they don't need a permission? Or if they do, in circum such circumstances, should such laws of state be religiously followed or not? Sister has a question that most of the men, they love having second wife. She did a survey, I think. Huh? <laughs> I'm a victim to this. Sorry? I'm a victim to this. No, if you're a victim, you cannot put all the men in the same bracket. If you're a victim to certain things, you cannot say most of the men. You can say some men, no problem. Correct? So if you're a victim to certain things, you cannot put all the men in the same bracket. Okay, anyway, coming to your question, that men, when they want to marry a second wife, they don't have to take permission. Because Allah has given them permission in the Quran, but certain states have said that they, it should be compulsory to take permission. What is my view? In Islam, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 3, marry women of your choice in twos, threes, or fours. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. This statement, marry only one, is only given in the Quran and no other scripture. If you can't do justice, you have to marry only one. That means Quran gives permission for a man to have two, three, or four wives, but they can't do justice, marry only one. In Islam, under normal circumstances, a husband need not take the permission of the wife before marrying a second wife. But in Islam, marriage, nikah, is a sacred covenant. During nikah, a would-be wife can put any condition which is permitted by the Sharia to the husband. Similarly, the husband can put any condition which is permitted by the Sharia. That means if a woman marries a man, she can put the clause that I will only marry you under condition that you cannot, that you do not take a second wife. Now, because marrying more than one wife is not compulsory in Islam, she can put a clause saying that I will only marry you if you do not take a second wife. She has the option. If women don't put the clause, who's to blame? Sister, did you put that clause in your marriage, Nikanama? Basically, um, Sister, in our... I'm asking you, please, your questions are so long, you're so emotional. Yes or no? Did you put a clause in your Nikanama before marrying that my husband should not take a second wife? It was already cut when the Nikanama came to me because this is what is I'm a common asking tradition. asking you a simple question, yes or no? Did you put the clause in the Nikanama that my husband should not take a second wife? Did you I put was yes? not asked for that. So who's to blame? If you did not ask for your right, who's to blame, me or you? If you don't ask, good even I will not ask. I'm asking, that means you did not know your religion, right or wrong? Did you know when you got married that you can put a clause in the Nikanama? Did you know yes or no? No. Who's to blame, you or your husband? Who's to, now you know? Now you know or not? Mister, now do you know or not? Yeah, now I know. That means your nikah nama, you can put any clause, but you cannot put a clause. You, you cannot tell your wife, you cannot tell your husband, you should not offer salah, because offering salah is fard. So you cannot prevent your husband from doing something which is fard, neither can you force him to do something which is haram. You cannot say, I want you to have alcohol every day, because having alcohol is haram. But anything which is mubah, which is optional, you can put a clause saying, if he agrees, he'll marry you. If he doesn't agree, he won't marry you. Khalas. So if you don't know your deen, who's to blame? You or me? Who's to blame? Why are you talking about the state? Forget the state. Every individual Muslim, man or woman, can put any clause which is optional. You can put a clause that I will only marry you if you give me every month 50,000 rupees. No problem. Agree? Agree. Agree. <laughs> Has the money, he will agree, no. Or you say one lakh rupees, put a clause. He may agree, he may not agree. You can demand the mahar what you want. You know mahar. How much mahar you kept, sister? But if they promise sister, a mahar and afterwards how much they are not yeah, giving them. I'm asking you a question. What is your, where do you come from? You are saying my name is so and so. What was the mahar in your marriage? One lakh. One lakh rupees. What can you do with one lakh rupees today? It's worth nothing. So why did you agree with that mayor? 
Who's to blame? Because you or there me? was no other option. Ah, so the problem is in you. Problem is that then you have to do. If there's no other option, that means you found the best. See, sister, Islam has got various options and varieties. The problem is that the Muslims and the men, they do not know their deen themselves. You don't know the deen and then you blame Islam. In Islam, the right has been given to the man because to protect the woman. And, and if you hear my answer, that why does Islam allow a man to have more than one wife? It's basically to protect the woman. If every man marries one woman, then women will be unprotected in this world. Because today, sister, there are more women in the world than the men. Do you know that? In New York alone, in USA alone, there are 4.3 million women more than men. In Germany alone, there are 1 million female more than men alone. In Russia alone, there are 10 million female more than men. If your sister or my sister happens to live in Germany, my, my sister happens to live in Russia, and there are 10 million females who have not found husband, only option for them is that they either marry a man who already has a wife or become public property. Do you understand? Public property, Dr. Zak, it's such a harsh word. It is the most sophisticated word I can use. So, polygyny, a man having more than one wife, has been given to protect the woman, not to degrade her. The problem is that many of the men, many of the Muslim women, they don't know their rights. We are to blame. We don't know our deen very well. Our deen, the amount of rights that the woman has in Islam is phenomenal. In other religion, the woman has to give money, right or wrong? In India, you have to give dowry or not normally? Yeah, correct. Have Did you give dowry? No. Did you give dowry? No. You received it. Alhamdulillah. So Islam has given rights if there is something happened with your husband and if he's not following Islam, then there are ways. I'm not telling. And one more thing, if your husband requires more than one wife, so why should you not support him? What is the problem? You tell me one thing, if the husband goes every day outside, huh? outside to other women, as long as he doesn't marry, most of the wives did not mind. No, no problem. But you go in America, eight days out of ten, you have to go in America, eight different sexual partners before they settle down. A good Muslim would say, I would prevent my Muslim sister from becoming a public property, I wouldn't mind sharing the husband. If she is a good Muslim, do you understand? Sister, do you understand? I, understand I feel you are emotionally well. so charged up just because your husband took a second wife. No, this is not the issue. Problem is, he is not owning his relations. This is the problem. He's this is my message it. by you to all the people who are here. Please, if you are going to own the relation, own them well. Don't desert the relation. Because not owning relationship means when he married the second wife. Did he say he was the second wife or not? But if he leaves you without giving you a word, you don't know where he is. He is not giving you your pocket money. He is sister, not knowing sister, you in what conditions you are sister, then. Sister, all this is doesn't carry weight because I cannot give a judgment without hearing the other side. Whatever much you criticize your husband. Point number one, a good Muslim will not criticize the husband in public. Do you understand? Public Allah, don't know me, Allah public says don't, in the Quran, inna Allah ma sabreen. Verily, Allah is with those who, even if my wife, however bad she is, I will, mashallah, she's very good. Mashallah, she's the best wife in the world. But even if my wife was the worst wife, I would never criticize her because I want to go to Jannah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best Muslim is that who's the best to his family, including the wife. Now, if your husband hypothetically is not good, you be good to him, khalas. He should say, how much am I torturing my wife, yet she's praising me. His heart should melt. Irrespective, the heart does not melt. You will go to Jannah. Do you know that, sister? You are losing your Jannah, sister. My advice from a brother to you is you are losing your Jannah by criticizing your husband in public. Do you understand, sister? But you are not understanding my question. I, my don't, question have to under I don't have to understand you, sister. Because I, as a person, cannot give judgment without hearing him. He's not present here. 
it is giba it is gibat my advice to you is that sister forget about gibat forgive you will go to jannah inshallah hope that answers the question can we have the next question please no assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I read a paragraph in Yohanna Bible uh, says that uh, this is the everlasting life to know you uh, the only true God and Jesus who you send uh, how, ca how can brother and sister who believe in Bible understand uh, this paragraph according to their belief sorry brother can you repeat your question I couldn't understand your accent can you speak a bit louder and slowly Okay. I read a paragraph in uh, Johanna Bible says that this is the everlasting life to know you, the only true God, and Jesus who you send. In Johanna Bible. Wahazi al Hayatul Abadiyya. Yes. Talking about Gospel of John. Wahazi al Hayatul Abadiyya. Any Arifuk. Bible is only in Arabic. Yes. Bible is in Greek and Aramaic. Arabic English. The what? Bible uh, is not in Arabic. A translation. Translation. I don't know the Arabic translation of the Bible. Uh, James uh, King. The King James Version King. is in English, not in Arabic. Translation of King oh. James. I don't know the translation by heart in Arabic. You say the English one. I, I know the, translation, the translated Arabic uh, paragraph. Okay, fine. Do you have any other question? No. Okay, fine. Can we have the next question, Bill? Hello. I'm, I'm asking this question on behalf of an atheist friend. Uh, the question is, um, I didn't have an answer for it, so I'm asking for some advice how to answer it. If God um, has knowledge of everything, um, he knows when we are going to sin, uh, when we are going to commit a good deed and ultimately if we're going to go to heaven or hell then why the, my friend was asking me why should we try and please God and believe in God if our, our fate is already determined the brother asked the question that if our fate is already determined in that destiny is there, so why should we try and please God? What you have to understand in destiny, that's Qadr, you Muslims have to believe, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of the future. For example, if in a classroom, if a teacher teaches the student, and before the examination, the teacher predicts that this teacher, this student will get first class first, this student will get second class, that student will fail. Now, after the examination, you get first class first, he gets second class, that student fails. Can the student who fails blame the teacher that because the teacher predicted, I will fail, I failed? No. No. The teacher knew that the student, this student was very studious, used to do his homework, this student used to play hooky, used to see movies. Teacher predicted. Similarly, in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ilm gab. The teacher being a human being can make a mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not make a mistake. Allah has knowledge of the future, but he knows what you're going to do. For example, if you come at a crossroad, we have four options. Road number one, two, three, four. You choose road number three. So Allah writes in advance on so-and-so date, on the 5th of June, 2016, when you come at a crossroad, you will choose road three. It is not because Allah is writing you will choose, because you will be choosing Allah writes in advance. Do you understand? Allah has knowledge of ilm gap He has knowledge of the future. It is not because Allah has written you are doing it. Because you will be doing it, Allah writes in advance. So who's to blame you, Allah? Me. You. So Allah has knowledge of the future in advance and he's written it down. Who's to blame? You are to blame. For example, once you pass your graduation, you can earn honestly or you can cheat. You choose to cheat. Who's to blame? You, Allah. You. So Allah writes in advance, after you finish your graduation, you will start cheating. It is not because Allah is writing your cheating, you will be cheating, Allah writes in advance. So that is the reason you are responsible for your deeds. You have to follow the Quran and Sunnah. If you follow the Quran, inshallah, you will go to Jannah. Hope that answers the question.
just sorry, what, one point then. Sorry, please, there are too many. We'll just have one last session. <coughs> just one last round. Okay. Only one question for a person. We'll just do one more last round before we end the session. Yes, sister. Last round from the microphone on the top, from the right, left, down, and here too. Last. Yes, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. My name is Maria Mohe. I'm a housewife. My question is about this suit. I had read a hadith about this suit. जो हदीस में सूद के बारे में नबी करीम सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ने कहा, जो सूद देते हैं और जो लेते हैं और इसको शायद हो रहते हैं और जो इसके हेल्प करते हैं सबको एक ही गुनागर है। तो मेरे सवाल है जो लोग ये सूदी बैंक में कम करते हैं यानी बैंकर हैं, उनकी रोजी खाना हमारे लिए कितनी दायित so, sister, SPO, only SPO. one question. Sister, one question. We are running late. Only one question. Sister asked a question. Thank you. That in the hadith is mentioned the person who takes the riba, the one who gives riba, the one who involves in riba, all are the same. So, how much can we be with a person or eat from the income of someone who takes riba? The Prophet said that if a person indulges in riba, it is totally haram. You cannot work in a, in a conventional bank. This income is haram. You are you also having food from this income. It is prohibited. Best is that you have food from the clean income. Hope that answers the question. Can we ask the next question? From the sister on the top. Is there any sister on the top, please? Okay, can we have the brother from... Last question from this microphone. Assalamu alaikum. Sir, you have me. भाईदा माइक में तो बात करो ना माइक के उधर उधर बात कर रहे माइक को अरे हाथ को फोल्ड करके रखे हाथ को नीचे करो माइक को ना सलाम वालेकुम वरहमतुल्ला वालेकुम सलाम वरहमतुल्ला ये वो बरकत दो हाथ तो खोलो ना भाईदा बोलो भाईदा आपका साथ मिलने के लिए बहुत कष्ट किया अंदर आने के लिए हम लोग दो दोस्त थे माशाल्लाह अभी आगे अंदर ना आने के लिए कोशिश कर रहे हैं अभी तो अंदर आ गया माशाल्लाह मुलाकात करने के लिए माशाल्लाह अभी अंदर तो आ गया ना वो सवाल क्या आपका भाई साहब अंदर भी आ गया सवाल भी पूछ लिया माय नेम इस मासूद हसन आई एम डिप्लोमा इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियर माय फर्स्ट आईडेंटिटी इज आई एम इंडियन and next question, if you ask what is your religious, I will say Muslim. But what, why Muslim? Because uh, my parents are Muslim. But when I came here, last five hours when I am listening to your uh, lecture speech, I realized that uh, I am only one person Muslim only. Because I don't know nothing. It's a past Muslim chapter. I don't know nothing. But with my little experience and knowledge, I can say that Islam is the science. Science means uh, continuous study, observation, and arrive some formula which is universally true. For example, <coughs> mathematics, there are so many formulas there, physical science, chemistry, there are... Brother, brother, did you hear the rules? Your question should be on two or three sentences. <coughs> yeah. If it is more so, than two or three <coughs> sentences, it's a speech. Yeah. The speech time is over. There are so many non-Muslims who are direct questions. Now you are beating around the bush. Yeah. Question should be in two or three sentences. So, okay, I will finish my question. My question is that peace TV not hurting any uh, religious sentiment, not damaging any individuals, not damaging any sentiments. But why peace TV is banned in India? Yes, the brother asked the question when T when peace TV is not hurting in, is not hurting any sentiments, why is peace TV banned in India? Because the government doesn't give us ground linking permission. You go and ask the government why they are not giving us ground linking permission. If that is the case. No, so not that is the case. We have applied, we have fulfilled all the requirements because it's a very popular channel. Yeah. I know that, I know. You know it's popular, no, very no, good. No, no, so that no. you have to go and ask the broadcast ministry. Yeah, I know the answer. Now the, my, my, our prime minister is coming next week. Whether Where? The, here. Ah, you whether, tell him. Here, in Qatar. Qatar. So whether we can raise this concern. Raise because it, very if, good. No, no, somebody should raise. If our you raise it, no, by somebody. No, no we don't know, some organizer should raise this concern. You raise it, no? You are also a citizen of India or not? <coughs> yes. You are a citizen of yeah, India. Yeah, yeah. Raise the question. Okay. 
Can we have the last question, please? Brother. Brother. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Last question. Bidi hai baat karte hoye. Khatam ho gayi baat. Sawal puchne ka kya nahi? Sir, uh, I would like to ask you one question for my Hindu friend. Yes. Uh, I, I, can I speak Hindi with you? Please. Uh, because, Tell me uh, uh, most of the people want to understand. Uh, सर वो बोलते हैं जो मैं सत्का करता हूँ, चैरिटी करता हूँ, मैं आदमी को हेल्प करता हूँ, मैं माँबाप का संग अच्छा बढ़ता हूँ करता हूँ, फिर भी मुझे प्रेयर क्यों करना है? Why should I pray? He asks me. मतलब प्रेयर का क्या चीज़ है? The question posed by the brother is that his friend is asking that I do good deeds, I help, I give charity. Why do I have to yet pray? When we give charity, all the secondary prayer means you are thanking Almighty God. In prayer. We are thanking Almighty God and we are asking Him for guidance. If you are doing charity, God is giving you all this air, water, health free. Shouldn't you thank Him or not? Yes. Prayer is separate, charity is separate. Doing prayer is more important than doing charity, right? Yes. God has given you all this health, given you this wealth, given you this life, given you water, correct? Yes. Should we thank Him or not? Yes. If you give charity, will that be sufficient? No. Yes. Charity is lesser good deed than prayer. Prayer is number one. The first thing Almighty God will ask you on the day of judgment among your deeds is about yes. your salah. That there is if you don't offer salah, yes. it is the fourth major sin in Islam. The, Hope no that answers the question. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Yeah, Doctor, the beach is requesting for a question. question. Non-Muslim. Andy says non-Muslim. Non-Muslim, I cannot say no. Yes, you're most welcome. Last question from a non-Muslim. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry for coming again. From the beach. No problem. If you're a non-Muslim, I love it. Yes. Yeah, actually, I uh, I was asking the second question now. Sorry. Uh, actually, I was just noticing the question answer session, and immediately this came to my mind. Actually, if I believe in Buddhism, actually Buddha asked to follow the Dhamma and he never told to believe in the past life and he never answered that there is an afterlife, afterlife or something. Uh, and he just kept quiet whenever any disciple of Buddha came and asked, is there a God? He just kept quiet. And Sorry, I cannot understand. What is the last sentence, brother? Buddha whenever there is a disciple of Buddha coming and asking before Buddha that uh, what do you say about God? He just kept quiet. Yes, he was silent. He was agnostic. Yeah. And also, uh, whenever there is a question like, is there any afterlife? He just quoted that. You no need to uh, worry about that. You just be here with peace and <coughs> please do the good deeds and please follow the Dhamma. Like in Hinduism, they say Dharma. In Buddhism, they say Dhamma. Of course, the good deeds. You just so what's the question, brother? Yeah. If, if I'm believing in that, uh, if, if I'm having a belief of that, then why I need to worry about uh, hell or heaven? And do I need to go to heaven? So what's your question? I don't understand your question. Buddha said, follow the Dhamma. That I understood. Yeah, yes. But what's your question? And he, and he never told like there is an afterlife. And also he never told like there will be a heaven or hell. Yes, he was silent. Yes, yes. So what and is your question? If, if I'm believing like that, and if I'm being good here, and if I am just following the Dhamma here, then I think I, I no need to, uh, you know, just to believe that I will be going to heaven or hell. So I can just live here peacefully and uh, with all the fellow people. Brother, if you don't believe in Astral, I am asking you a question. Hitler, Hitler incinerated six million Jews, correct? Yeah, yes, I... Imagine yeah. he comes here, he lives a peaceful life. Kalas, do you think God is just... Six million Jews incinerated. Yes. So do, do you think there should be justice for him or not? Yeah, Will you believe in such a life? Someone comes and kills six million people and he goes scot free? No, definitely not agree. That means, should there be life after death or not? Should yes or no? Yeah, he should be punished. Oh, this is logical. You can hear my answer on the subject of life after death, where I've proved scientifically and logically the existence of hereafter, brother. So th this hereafter should be there. Without that, you cannot leave 
in this life and you cannot say what is good or what is bad. Hereafter is a must and you have to believe in it. Hope that answers the question. And one, 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 one more thing, sorry, sorry. I, you are just quoting that 1400 years before only the uh, Islam. I cannot hear you, brother. Can you speak a 14, bit loudly? 1400 years before only this Islam and the uh, teachings have been uh, just gotten propagated. Uh, like I told you before, like before 25, I mean uh, 2500 years, Buddha was there. And of course, even we in the Middle East having some, uh, you know, uh, historic things left behind, of course, in Afghanistan and also in Pakistan, we have Buddha idols. So it just says that there are peoples who follow Buddhism in the Gulf region, but then it might have uh, vanished or the peoples might have then converted to Islam. Brother, what is your question? I can't understand your question. So for example, historically speaking, Gulf region is having Buddhism. Sorry? Historically, Gulf region had Buddhism. Yes. But then it, the people then just converted to, uh, you know, Islam. Uh, what I'm thinking is that maybe the Dhamma might have translated, uh, maybe the Dhamma might have uh, changed into Quran or something. Is, is that right? Or because I, well, I don't this know. This is all nonsense. Dhamma changed into this. Quran is a revelation. Okay. If Dhamma, I gave such a long talk on scientific points about the Quran. The Dhamma doesn't have all these scientific points, brother. It's illogical to think like that. Do you understand? Actually, actually, he, Buddha didn't Actually, say... actually, brother, I spoke about science today. Yes. When you put this test of science to any scripture, all the scriptures fail. Now you are saying Quran is from Dhamma. Hey, brother. No, there are, there are sayings that Quran might be from Dhamma because... Who said that? I, I heard, I heard actually. You heard wrong things, brother. Anyone says anything you want to believe. I gave a talk talking about scientific aspects of the Quran. Now you are saying that Quran has been taken from Dhamma. If you put the test of science to Dhamma, Dhamma will face the test. Do you understand? Okay. Yes, brother. Yes, 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 yes. So if something which is unscientific, how can you get a scientific thing from something which is unscientific? So I'll just read through Quran once again. So that Therefore, the last and final revelation of Almighty God, which has been preserved in the true form, it is the Quran. Okay. These are all your weird thinking that this is from there and this is from that. Quran is a word from Almighty God directly. I gave a lecture proving to the atheist about the existence of God. Who is the author of the Quran? The creator, the sustainer, the cherisher, this creator, this sustainer. This cherisher we call as Allah. Do you understand, brother? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Brother, do you believe in one God? I don't think so. I'm still not yet prepared to believe in God. Okay, I would I request you to read the Quran, the translation. Sure, with And I pray to Almighty God to guide you. Yeah. Dawan, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Sheikh uh, Dr. Darker. We would like to thank you all for attending and we would like to thank everybody, everybody in the organizing committee here in Katara. We would like to thank uh, Dr. Khalid, the head of Katara. We would like to thank everyone who arranged and who stayed late tonight to uh, make this event happen as good as it, uh, it did. Thank you all very much. And maybe the final thing we need all to know as Muslims and those who accepted Islam and even non-Muslims, you can believe in God, but you have to show it in your action. There are many Muslims, they all believe in God, but we have to see it in their action. This is the most important, the belief plus the action. Thank you very much for coming. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zakir. May Allah accept your work and good night. <laughs> good morning.